wellness on board the blood vessel. Okay? What are the two major blood vessels that coming from coming and going through the heart? What are the two major group of blood vessels coming coming from and going to the heart? So we have of course your arteries and veins. What is of course the largest artery that we got? Aorta. And if the largest vein we got will be what's the largest vein? The largest vein in the human body is that? Oh, tell me, but tell me that you don't know. Because I want, of course, to have, of course, an IVC filter to be placed there in order to prevent, of course, the strain, all those blood clots that could engage, that could, of course, go into the cardiac, the coronary circulation. What is the biggest, of course, again? What's the, the biggest, of course, vein in the body? No other than? The vena cava, okay? An inferior, and we speak, of course, of IVC, inferior vena cava filter, which, of course, prevent, of course, blood clot formation to go, of course, there in your coronary circulation. And again, that's, of course, the main thing, of course. Everything, we have, how many chambers the heart has? Four. Four, okay? So we know the circulation, okay? So, and then we have, of course, some of the violations in the principles of arteries as well as veins, especially, of course, with your pulmonary artery as well as your pulmonary veins. Yeah? So, but nevertheless, of course, it's the circulation. So, basically, we're talking about the heart itself, as well as, of course, the blood vessels in it. So, the blood vessels are basically, of course, just, of course, the tumor. Okay? The last part of this will be, of course, cut into half. As you can see, of course, in this chapter of the cardiac, of course, pathology or the cardiac, cardiac, cardio, cardiac disorders will be, of course, a part of the PBD. Okay? These are the blood vessels. So, we're going to talk about separate, of course, blood vessels. Right now, in general, we're going to do the characteristics of the disorders that affect, of course, the blood vessels, both arterial in nature as well as venous in nature, we're going to talk as part of the PVD. We call them peripheral vascular disease disorders, okay? But right now, we'll be talking about that affects the heart. What's the function of the heart in itself, of course, and what are the disorders that primarily affect the heart? That will gonna be affecting the function of the heart. What is the function of the heart in the first place? Okay. So again, what are the things? What do you think of course? My question will be: What is the purpose, of course, of the pump? What is the ultimate goal? Why we why we have a pump? In order to deliver, of course, oxygen as well as nutrients to throughout the cells, of course, of the human body. Is that? Okay, now the question will be, of course, the function, of course, of delivery for this one, we speak of circulation, okay? Heart is only part of it, okay? When you pump, you have to make sure, of course, that you have, of course, a correct diameter or there is no problem with the canal or the tubing, okay? So heart itself, of course, any problem that we're going to entail to prevent the heart from pumping, okay, will be, of course, affecting, of course, the delivery, of course, of the blood. And as we have said, one of the most important thing, of course, in the delivery of this one, of course, of the blood, as nutrients of, as well as oxygen, will be to maintain the correct blood pressure. So that yeah. the blood pressure should be maintained in order, of course, for correct and proper delivery of nutrients as well as oxygen, okay? So in, in this condition, of course, we will be, be talking about a lot of factors, of course, affecting this, okay? But again, structurally, of course, the heart, of course, should be a hollow muscular organ divided of course, into two separate parts, the left and the right, and divided into four chambers, okay? The left chamber of the heart, of course, will be entailed or function, of course, to deliver the oxygenated or the clean blood throughout the circulation, okay? And, of course, the right side of the heart or the right hemisphere of the heart will be the one, of course, to receive the dirty blood or the oxygenated blood in order to be delivered to the pulmonary circuit or the respiratory system in order to be cleaned, of course, and to receive another round of oxygen, okay? We know about that one. Now, the question will be, I talked about to Mikhail, with Mikhail, she presented some videos, of course, affecting, of course, the cardio, the cardiac cycle and the cardiopulmonary system, isn't that? But basically, the heart is only a pump. So any problem, what are the problems do you think that will affect the, heart, the, the pump itself? Huh? Blood clot. Blood clot where? Tell me. Be specific. Where is the blood clot? Mm -hmm. Now the question will be now again, we, we divide it, okay? In order, of course, just think about this one. In order to deliver, of course, oxygen and nutrients, therefore we have to have a good pump, okay? We'll be talking later on as we, as we progress, of course, the, 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 the tubing, okay? So basically, of course, these are the things that affect your blood pressure. 
In order, of course, to maintain proper delivery, of course, of oxygen and nutrients, we have to maintain a certain level, of course, of pressure. And we call that one as our mean arterial pressure. And what is the mean arterial pressure to be maintained? In order to be compatible with life, it should be 60 mmHg, okay? The result of this pressure is very, very important because a lot of factors will be affecting the pressure, of course, of blood inside the, close, the, the circulatory system, okay? So one of the one, of course, will be, first one, of course, will be factors about the preload, okay? When you speak of preload, the contractility, the strength of the heart should be, of course, effective in order, of course, to push the blood, of course, out, of course, of the aorta, okay? And the same is true when you speak of afterload. These are the factors. Afterload are only peripheral resistance. How would, of course, the, 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 the afterload, of course, resist, of course, the, the, the ejection, of course, of the heart will be usually, of course, in the diameter of the arteries as well as in the veins, okay? So, but later on, we're going to talk about that one, especially, of course, with the afterload. And the third factor, of course, that will be affecting the blood pressure will be, of course, your blood volume. Now, the three things, of course, will be, when you speak, of course, of based, of course, on this condition, these are the conditions that affect your blood pressure. Thus, if you're going to affect your blood pressure, either it will increase or decrease, of course, your blood pressure. Okay? Preload, meaning to say all the problem is in the pump clear. When you speak, of course, of preload problem, we are talking about the problem within the heart, okay? Now, if it is afterload, it is the peripheral resistance. Where is the problem? In the arteries and veins, okay? Blood vessels, okay? Afterload will be blood vessels. And the third problem will be blood volume will be the amount of water inside the vascular compartment. The higher the volume of water, the higher the pressure. Okay? So these things, of course, should be balanced. These are the three factors that affect the blood pressure. And again, I would like to emphasize, blood pressure should be maintained in a parameter in order, of course, to be effective in delivering, of course, oxygen. Not too high. That will be the cause collapse of the course of the cardiovascular system. The same is true, of course, not too low. That it could not deliver oxygen. Clear. Okay? So now, my question will be, our problem is distributed in these three conditions. Okay? The pathology, of course, of the heart will be, of course, distributed in these three problems. Therefore, first one, heart. What are the problems with the heart? That's a good thing. That could affect, of course, again, preload, afterload, blood volume. These are the factors, of course, in one important thing. Cardiac output. Okay? The cardiac output. What is cardiac output? How do we compute cardiac output? It is the amount of blood. What, again, what, what, how do you define, of course, the cardiac output? Uh, cardiac output is equal to the... What is cardiac output? The amount of the... Amount of blood? Where? How much blood? is ejected from the left ventricle or is passed through the aorta in one full minute. Minute, isn't that? Is that correct? Isn't that the cardiac output? So we have, of course, a required cardiac output. And what are the factors that will be affecting it? Will be the volume of blood, due to your stroke volume, the volume of blood ejected each beat, okay? Therefore, each beat, if this is the, the volume delivery, of course, of the, of the blood, we call that stroke volume, times, of course, your how many, of course, beats you have got in one minute. Therefore, your cardiac output will be computed as, of course, your stroke volume, the volume of blood ejected each beat, and how many beats are there in one minute, okay? These are, of course, supposed to be, it, again, it means, of course, that the, the usually one of the compensations for the one will be to increase, of course, the heart rate in order to increase the blood volume. But always remember, any heart rate that is above 120 is no longer effective in delivering cardiac output. Why? Because, again, you don't give time for feeling. Meaning to say, even if you're going to be, how could it, of course, it eject if the, it, of course, primarily, of course, the ventricles are not being filled, okay? That's why usually cardiac output will be, of course, effective on a certain level. If you have, of course, 150 heart rate, do you think it is still effective in delivering, of course, oxygen, okay? That's why this rate, of course, is above, of course, 150 is a little bit, of course, problem with the heart, okay? But it affects, of course, the heart. Therefore, when I speak, of course, a problem with the heart rate, it is primarily a preload problem, okay? So why? Because, of course, of the fact, of course, that it affects, of course, your delivery, of course, of oxygen. So again, another question then, what are the problems in preload? 
give me the pathology in preload. What are the things, of course, that will affect preload? Again, preload is the performance of the heart. Okay, that affects, of course, your cardiac output. Blockage, you said, of course, blockage of what? Where? Coronary arteries. That will lead into what? Blockage is just another problem, but again, it will lead, of course, into what? One will be, of course, either two forms. If it is still possible, if there is still a little bit, of course, of oxygenation, it will lead on only what we call a short ischemia, or ischemic attack. That's why we have what we call a short TIA, transient ischemic attack. And again, watch out, TIA is reversible. But according to your book, of course, watch out for TIA, because TIA is a precursor of a full-blown myocardial infarction. In myocardial infarction, there is zero, of course, circulation on that part, of course, of the heart. Therefore, if you cannot reverse that myocardial infarction, the tendency of the heart, of course, will be to necrose or to die. Okay? And later on, how would we know, of course, that we have tissue death or cardiac tissue death? Then usually, of course, we have to check, of course, of blood vessels, blood, blood, blood works, okay? Which we're going to talk. That's one problem, of course. Primarily, any stoppage of the heart, whether, of course, poor circulation to the heart muscle itself, which could be, of course, caused by a blood clot. Just like myocardial infarction, TIA is a problem with the preload. What else? The hardening of the muscle. Huh? Hardening of the chamber muscle. Hardening chamber. Which part? Uh, be specific. The left. Left. Hardening of which part? The Muscles, ventricle. the myocardium. The left ventricle. The left ventricle, why? What caused, of course, the hardening? Because, again, remember, if we are talking, of course, of blood vessels, we are talking about the afterload. Okay? After low, they're all blood vessels. Your atherosclerosis, your PVD, or your usually blood clots, as a matter of fact, that's already a problem, of course, of your after low, because the formation of blood clots will be coming from there, primarily. What if uh, you have atherosclerosis and it affected the, the valves? Is it possible? Atherosclerosis, which valve? Which valve, of course, are you talking about, of course, the chamber of the heart valve? Usually, atherosclerosis won't affect, of course, that too much. And that it could be, but in the later. The most common problem in effect, of course, if you are talking about the valves of the heart, would be more of an infectious in nature. Just like, of course, your rheumatic fever. That could lead, of course, into failure, of course, of the valves of the heart. Okay? Another one will be your bacterial endocarditis, which is inflammation, of course, the innermost lining of the heart. Okay? These are the problems. Or probably, of course, because, of course, of regurgitation, it will lead, of course, into CHF. Therefore, CHF itself, of course, is a problem in preload. Because, again, the problem is in the heart itself. But if you're talking about, of course, hardening of the blood vessel, well, it affects, of course, the delivery, of course, of the oxygen, but it is, of course, the afterload. So when you speak, of course, of the heart, the primary, of course, will be the heart itself. Okay? When you think, of course, of course, of, of blood vessel myocardial infarction, it could be peripheral in nature, but primarily it affects, of course, the myocardium. That is why, of course, it is part, of course, of the preload problem. Okay? Another problem, of course, will be, how about if the heartbeat is so bad? There is no coordination, or probably the heart just stops beating. Is it a problem? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It is. Isn't it? Whatever caused that one, it could be electrolyte imbalance, secondary to potassium, or it could be, of course, a problem, of course, with related, of course, to your mitochondrial infarction. It could be still cessation, of course, of the beat of the heart, or probably alteration in the electrical impulse of the heart could lead, of course, to the problem with the preload. Why? Because either, of course, the beat or the rate, of course, of the heart rate will be increased, or another one, sometimes, the heart rate could be low. Remember, heart rate affects, of course, your preload because it affects, of course, your total cardiac output. Because your cardiac output will be, of course, the volume of the blood ejection in one beat times, of course, the beat, times, of course, the beat, how, how many beats, of course, of the heart in a full minute. Okay? Therefore, rhythm, problems, of course, electrical conduction will be affected, of course, your preload. Okay? Do you get the problem? I just would like, of course, to map generally, of course, where we are going to and what will be we talking. So this is the simplest way, of course, of talking about it. Medication later on, you can divide it, of course, into three things. Okay? Three things. Preload, probably. We are talking about the heart. Could we slow down the heart? Should we increase the contractility of the heart, the force of ejection of the heart? That is all in the preload, just like, of course, your digitalis. After load later on will be the diameter itself, of course, of the blood vessel. The, the smaller the, 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 blood, the, the blood vessel diameter, especially arterial, the increased pressure, of course, that the heart has to eject. Okay? So that your problem of atherosclerosis is one of the primary hardening wall, of course, of the arteries, will be the number one problem, of course, that will lead, of course, to the problem with the after load. 
Okay? The same is true, is, like for example, if you are giving medication to, to do vasoconstriction and vasodilation, it will affect, of course, your afterload. That is why, does coffee affect, of course, if we're going to ask you, coffee, which part, of course, of this area, which segment, of course, with the, what type of problem will gonna, will gonna bring, of course, in terms, of course, of the cardiac output or the cardiac delivery? So which part, is it preload, afterload, blood volume, that will be affected by coffee? If you say afterload, why? Give me the, give me the reason. Preload. Coffee. It is, of course, useful because if you have cardiac problem, we try to avoid coffee. Yeah. So meaning to say, if I'm going to ask you how it is affected, because it affects afterload, you said. In what way? Caffeine causes massive vasoconstriction. That is why if you drink coffee, it will get a constraint. Therefore, you're increasing the pressure. Therefore, you have problems with the afterload. What if another one will be that coffee increases your heart rate, tachycardia. Therefore, coffee also affects your preload because it affects, of course, the heart rate. Do you get the problem? Do you, do you get the point? So again, that's one way, of course, how to think of more simply about the point. But again, for example, if you are drinking too much water, or probably, of course, if you have problems, of course, with your adrenal, adrenal cortex, or probably you are taking prednisone, that of course, or uh, uh, prednisone or steroids, that will then increase, of course, your blood volume. Then, of course, that will be, of course, problems that will do with blood volume. You have to regulate the blood volume. So again, anything that affects the blood volume, that increases the blood volume, equals, of course, affecting the blood pressure. And we have to manage. As you can see, there is a lot of medication in certain three categories that will affect, of course, the cardiovascular system. Therefore, cardiovascular system is not only managed by what we manage, of course, the heart itself, in the preload. By managing, of course, the blood vessels in the afterload, we also manage, of course, your blood volume. That is why in your medication that affects, of course, the cardiovascular system, you see there, of course, your loop diuretics, the most potent form of your diuretics, in order to decrease, of course, the blood volume by promoting the kidney, of course, to lose a lot of urine. What is your most potent loop diuretic? What is the most common loop diuretic that we are using? Lasix. Very good, Lasix. If I'm going to ask you, of course, is that if we, all, if, if we are using, of course, your potassium sparing diuretics, then we are talking about your spironolactone. We have three forms, as a matter of fact. We have hydrochlorothiazide, okay? Another one will be your furosemide Lasix, and the other one, of course, will be your spironolactone. Now the question would be, could we give Lasix, of course, in a cardiac problem? Could we use Lasix to manage, of course, cardiac problems? Yes. Yeah. Just, just take this one down. Yeah. I just need the sports. No, too short. Okay. So, could we give Lasix, of course, to a problem with the with the cardiac, yeah. with the cardiac problem? Mm -hmm. And the question will be, what kind of problem is that? So probably, it is, of course, a cardiac problem, a heart problem related to blood volume. What is that? A primary problem. What is that? Excess. Excess fluid. It may like to be, but the most common problem, okay? Heart regurgitation, secondary, of course, to blood volume. C. A Therefore, Lasix is usually a primary treatment, of course, for your Asia. Okay? So these are the three things, of course, to categorize it. To go deeper on that one, okay? So we need to say, first, we're going to talk, of course, the electrical conductivity of the heart, and then we need, of course, to talk about it one. And to go deeper, of course, what are the tests that we could do in order, of course, to check if we have problems or not, okay? So, but again, think about it one. Which part, of course, of the circulation is this one? Does it, does it affect preload? So anything that affects, of course, the heart itself will be a preload factor. Okay? Just like, of course, anything, of course, left. For example, what, what's the problem? It's the problem with the preload. That's one way to think about it. The same is true. These three things affect your blood pressure. In our management for your blood pressure pertains to these three categories. Do we have to slow down the heart rate to effectively eject? Do we decrease the peripheral resistance? Do we create dilation or decrease, of course, peripheral resistance? Or do we decrease, of course, blood volume? Okay, those are the things, of course, that we have, of course, to manage. Okay. So cardiovascular conditions will be interfering, of course, with the heart's ability to pump, preload, as I have said. 
disruption in the blood flow within the blood vessels, afterload, disruption flow goes to localized areas or the peripheral vascular disease. It could be another factor because that we didn't include here will be, of course, your blood volume. But primarily, we will be talking primarily, of course, there, the preload and the afterload. This is, of course, the leading cause of death among first people, of course, over 25 years of age. Okay, so so again, this is the second second leading cause of disability among younger population. But as a matter of fact, is the number one, of course, the cause of course of death too in the United States of America. Okay, either cardiac or cardiovascular related condition. Okay, whether it was affecting directly the heart or the blood vessel itself. Wherever it comes, usually if you don't manage one of the factor, it will end up damaging the other factors. Okay, so that's why of course. But cardiology, of course, cardiac health is the one important push, of course, for us. One, of course, of the factors for that one will be, of course, it might be, of course, the way we care ourselves, the food that we eat, okay, and everything, of course, in the activity that we are doing, okay? So there are some people, of course, that are specialized in the coronary care unit, of course, or your CCU, okay? Specialized hospital units care, of course, for these disorders. The staff here are trained, of course, to do emergency measures, coronary care, okay? In the emotional aspects of coronary care nursing. So again, someday, if you will be, of course, RNs, so you will be specializing in cardio, cardio, either you will be in cardio or in one of the step down, telemetry. In telemetry, is another area where you have to monitor the recovering heart. But in the CCU, it is just equivalent, of course, of the ICU, where you are entertaining only people, problems, of course, with the heart itself or the circulation itself. Yeah. So measures of, the, we have a lot of course of diagnostic tool, of course, how would we know? Okay, so in order of course to help us or the doctors assess the problem and of course to reach of course the correct diagnosis. First one of course will be your CK. Okay? CK to be specific what kind of CK, it should be for CK and B. Free head and kinase, of course, are, are markers, or we call this cardiac enzymes, that are elevated, of course, when there is a problem with the heart muscles. Like for example, as we have said. If there is, of course, a myocardial infarction or attack, of course, or heart attack, it could be, of course, a problem that it will start, if it's not revived properly, there will be, of course, a start of the tissue death or necrosis of the cardiac muscles. In the event that cardiac muscles dies, it releases, of course, enzymes that could be seen or measured, of course, in the blood. CK, to be specific, CKMB is one of them, okay? <coughs> so if somebody, of course, will be going to check, of course, the CK, especially the CKMB, CK is for the muscles, but CKMB is specific, of course, for your myocardial muscles because cardiac, especially the heart itself, is a form of muscle. Another one is your AST, okay? In your AST, AST is a general one. So if you are affected, of course, in your muscles or any injury to your tissues, AST will be elevated, okay? AST is your aspartate amino transferase, okay? Usually, of course, together in order to check, Usually, when AST is elevated, it means that there is injury to the tissue. The question will be, what, what, is, what, 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 or what tissue, of course, is injured, or what is tissue is damaged? Usually, if you are checking AST and ALD, if both of which are elevated, again, AST is a general marker for injury to the tissues, to the organs. Clear. Okay? If it is elevated, it doesn't mean it is the heart right away. That is why... We, we go together AST as well as your troponin, okay, or CKMB, or another one will be your LDH. The most specific one among this one will be your troponin. Troponin TNI, this is not TNT. TNT is tago ng tago, no, it is not, it's TNI, okay? Two isoenzymes, the TNL and TNI. Change this one, in your group it will be TNI, okay? These are the two markers that are very specific and could raise right away three to four hours right after myocardial injury. Therefore, definitely they are was one of course of the most specific marker to distinguish why we measure this one, because we want to know if indeed the patient who complained chest pain has a massive damage of the heart muscles. Okay? Now AST is a general of course increase, but again usually if AST is increased and we check the troponin, troponin is increased, it means of course that the tissue that is dying or having problems will be the heart. Another condition will be, if AST is elevated, in another enzyme will be elevated, ALT. 
ALT for your formulary of FGOT. If ALT is also increased, it means, of course, that it is not the heart that's damaged, it is your liver. Okay? But AST is a general thing. But again, to be specific, troponin will be, of course, be troponin I and troponin L will be more specific. Okay? If you collect, if you could, if you will be given a chance to select, of course, for this, what kind of enzymes will be more cardiac specific or heart specific, the answer will be troponin. Okay? Another one, myoglo myoglobin. Myoglobin in itself, of course, is if there's a damage, of course, to the muscles. And again, it could, of course, be true to, of course, skeletal muscles. It could be also true, of course, to your cardiac muscles. Because, again, any injury to the muscles will get a raise, of course, the myoglobin. Okay? Another one is your CK, to be specific, CK, troponin, and TNL. These are the three things, of course, usually we check together with the one AST. It could help a little bit, again, your troponin. Troponin, of course, especially, of course, your troponin, this is not the troponin L. Troponin I and troponin L and your CK will be, of course, more specific, usually, of course, being tested. Okay? The others will be supplemental. So what, which one? Usually, of course, these are the things that we check when we suspect myocardial infarction. Again, if the patient, of course, when do you know, of course, that we have, of course, possible myocardial infarction? How would you know that the patient, of course, has possible myocardial infarction? How do we define MI? Based, of course, on the symptoms. Blood pressure? No, blood pressure is not, of course, an indication of course, myocardial infarction. In myocardial infarction, this is say we have injury to the heart, secondary, of course, to blockage of the coronary artery. Stroke? Stroke is different. Oh. It doesn't mean if you have an MI, you have a stroke. No. MI is a different category. Although, the causation to that one would be a thrombus or an embola. Okay? But my question would be, how would you know where somebody, of course, is having an MI? Definitely, chest pain, because again, when speak of the first one injury, the first response of cells to injury would be pain. Okay? Pain is a body defense to signify, of course, the rest of course of the body that there is possible injury to the tissues in the cells of the part of the body. That's why we have chest pain. Now, the question would be, chest pain, of course, will be on the manifestation. The most common is that, is it an ischemic attack or is it a full-blown myocardial infarction? That is why, usually, when somebody complains of chest pain, usually, of course, we have to give them oxygen, isn't it? And the most important thing, later on, we have them rest. Okay? So if, of course, and another one thing, if there's somebody with history, of course, of chest pain, the first medication Nitro that we have to give. Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin. quick. Okay? So we put this up lingually, usually, of course, in order, of course, to monitor the patient. Within 5 to 10 minutes, we have, we have to 5 to 15 Something minutes, we have to check. We could give another second dose. Okay? If it does not respond to the second dose, we suspect that it's a full-blown MI, then you have, of course, to call 911 to send, of course, the patient to the nearest ER. Okay? But again, if the patient, the most common one is what is an MI in terms of pain, again, MI could be not only, of course, that it is terrible pain. Sometimes, believe it or not, especially in women, it could be, of course, signified, of course, or manifested by a form of, of course, a probable indigestion. So sometimes, the manifestation of MI usually comes in different form. It could be either referred pain to the right shoulders or to the left shoulders. It doesn't matter. Okay? The only problem for the one will be, of course, is that is it relieved, of course, by nitroglycerin and rest. If a pain, chest pain, is relieved by nitroglycerin and rest, we know that, again, it is a probable TIA, or transient ischemic attack. Okay? If that would be, but again, if it recurs again, it means, of course, that, again, always remember that, again, TIA is a precursor of an impending myocardial infarction, okay? And one that right away is that if the patient goes to the hospital, we have to draw all these things right away with particular healing or highlight, of course, the troponin I and troponin L. Clear? Okay? Now, sometimes, that's, of course, the emergency in order, of course, to see. So, all these enzymes, usually serum enzymes, reflect to cardiac health. If some of this will be elevated, they signify only one thing. There is myocardial injury. Clear? Okay, myocardial injury. 
how it is being endured because it is not receiving enough oxygen period okay so our goal there later on when they have tried to, 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 to what we have tried to resolve it how do we resolve it either we remove of course the flat if we could do so or another one is that if it is totally flat we have of course to create a bypass in order for that part of course of the specifics of the heart will receive of course enough oxygen or else if it dies the patient will die okay so another problem of course will be blood lipids fat studies how fat are you it's not it's only the, not the weight but again we have of course to know what the values for this one okay because the number one common problem with your coronary artery disease that affects of course your heart will be of course the level of fats in the body okay and sad to say again i don't know why fat is created so yummy isn't it <laughs> So if it's created that we're gonna we will gonna puke of course each time we eat fat, we will eat it. But again, this will of course life is so boring without an oil. Everything. It pertains to everything. Okay? Everything. It should be an oil. Okay, both of course in the diet. Why? Now, for example, your greens, your vegetables. Do you think you could you can you can get the for the full benefit of course of your greens if you don't eat it with oil? The vitamin, especially in your greens, is contains vitamin A, as well as vitamin K. Always remember, vitamin A, D, E, and K are fat soluble. Therefore, if you eat all those bridges, of course, or greens without, of course, a little bit of oil in it, you cannot remove the vitamins in it, especially the vitamin A, because vitamin A is fat soluble. Okay, that's the really bad of it. So that's why sometimes when you eat your salad, okay. Is this why the most effective way, of course, of putting dressing on it will be a little bit, of course, of olive oil. Okay? Because again, why? It will make sure, of course, that you're going to see that you're going to, of course, absorb, of course, the vitamins in it. Okay? So, but again, too much fat, of course, will be done. Why? Because fat are divided into forms. Primarily, of course, in your, to be specific for this one, it's called the lipoprotein. And we have to test it. Because the higher your fat level in your body, the higher there is, of course, of possible clogging of the afterload of the blood vessels. And then one of the one problem for that one will be your atherosclerosis, okay? And not only atherosclerosis, of course, of the periphery, but also atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries, okay? So now we have to test, of course, your cholesterol, okay? Total cholesterol, we have two forms, isn't it? LDL and HDL. What is the normal HDL then? First one is that you have to know your total cholesterol. And then one course, you have of course to know your low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. And then the third one will be your triglyceride. According to your book, what is the normal, of course, according to the book, what is, of course, the desirable total cholesterol level? 150. Huh? As a matter of fact, the 150, of course, will be already an increasing risk, of course, of coronary artery disorders. 100. Okay? So again, we want to push it below 150. Okay? The number, my number will be 150, but below 150. Okay, how do you complete your total cholesterol? It should be, of course, the goal here, of course, will be below 150. Because according to your book, a 150, of course, will be having already a certain risk, of course, for coronary artery disorders. Low density lipoprotein should be? Less than 90. Less than 90. Very good. I want it to be less than 90. High density lipoprotein? Less, less than 60. No? Greater than? Greater than 90. High density is a good cholesterol. Low density cholesterol, low, de low, that, low density true. lipoprotein are your bad cholesterol. We want a higher high cholesterol level, a high a high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol. Okay, therefore we want the value to be above sixty, depending on the lab. But again, the better of course the higher closer to sixty will be good. The higher than not, it's better. Some values will be thirty nine. But in, for the purpose of course of computation, I wanted to course to be greater than sixty. Okay, now. Another way to compute your, your triglyceride will be, what is your triglyceride level? Below 150. 
Okay? To compute your total cholesterol level would be LDL plus, plus of course, your HDL and, time, and usually, of course, 0 0.2 of your triglyceride. Example, what is the total cholesterol level, of course, of somebody, of course, who has LDL, of course, of 95, HDL of HDL of HDL of uh, 80. 80, uh, 65, and 170. What is the total cholesterol level? 80 plus 65 equals? 145. Is it 145? 145 times 170 times 0 0.2, what is that? What is 0. Point, what's 20 percent, of course, of 170? 1770, no, we're going to do it over. So 2 plus 14 will be, of course, 34. 34, of course, will be 34. Is that correct? Am I correct? 170 times 20% equals 34. Am I correct? Could you use your calculator? Okay. So you add it up because it will be 9, 7, 179. Then this patient, of course, probably has a will potential running from the risk. But some doctors will tell you our target for total cholesterol level will be between 150 to below 200. That's why some doctors will make it a target. As long as keep as much possible your total cholesterol to below 200. Okay? But why was I put 150? Because of course of your book says that a 150 total cholesterol level could potentially have a risk for running in front of your cardiac coronary artery disorders, okay? So that's your total cholesterol level. And again, your, the one where we usually, of course, eat it. What, what usually, of course, the source of food that we're going to increase, of course, your cholesterol level, especially your low density. So it should be, of course, usually, of course, plant source. So usually, if we eat steak, usually, it is primarily, of course, containing a lot, of course, of low-density lipoprotein. When you speak of low-density, it is, of course, their weight. High density, of course, because it is highly dense, usually they float in the blood. So they could circulate freely. As a matter of fact, especially your omega-3, it will help, of course, your heart function properly. But your low density are so heavy because of that one, they settle down at the bottom, of course, of your blood vessels, causing, of course, blockage of your blood vessels. So that's why, usually, how do we decrease the LDL? Primarily by decrease by monitoring of course the diet of course in order to maintain of course a low cholesterol low density cholesterol and again by the selection of the fat okay and high density therefore of course you have to do exercise in order to increase your high density lipoprotein okay other test measures serum electrolytes to detect cardiac to detect cardiac arrhythmias so what are what are possible of course what is the primary electrolyte that affects the cardiac function potassium, potassium. so again if i'm going to ask you what would be, of course, a problem if you have, of course, hyperpotassemia or hyperkalemia? Is it bradycardia or tachycardia? Is it tachycardia? Hyperpotassemia or hyperkalemia? Is it tachycardia? Are you sure? How about, of course, if you're hypopotent? Why? Why bradycardia? I want to know the why. Okay? As a matter of fact, when you give, of course, potassium push, you are killing the patient. What will be the result? You're stopping the heart. Okay? Uh -huh. It's cardiac arrest. But again, more or less, but the same thing is that I would agree with you, whether it is high potassium or low potassium, the end result will be cardiac dysrhythmias. Okay? Which, again, cardiac dysrhythmias has potential, of course, could be a full-blown myocardial infarction. Okay? So, but nevertheless, of course, that's one, of course, of the most sensitive that will be, the, will be affecting both the cardiac function. Another one, x-ray evaluation. We have to do x-ray. Angiocardiogram. X-ray study of the heart, major blood vessels. After we inject, of course, a dye. Usually, of course, if we have history of myocardial infarction or ischemia, we could do, of course, an angiocardiogram in order to take a look, of course, where is the blockage. Okay? So, provide information about structural abnormalities of the vascular calcification, especially atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries. 
Okay? So arteriogram, this will be, of course, the x-ray study, of course, of your arteries, whether, of course, it will be the aorta, abdominal aorta, whether, of course, whatever part, of course, of the blood vessel. Especially if we suspect some anomaly in terms, of course, of blockage, usually blockage, or stenosis will be, of course, a common problem that will warrant us to study the arteries itself, okay? to view itself, to view, of course, the, the artery in order to give us some idea what is, of course, the problem. Okay? Ask, usually, if we are using angiocardiogram, always remember the baseline question. Are you allergic, of course, to shellfish? Because, again, the most common, of course, contrast medium that we are using usually is iron base. So if they are allergic, of course, to crustacean or shellfish, or, of course, or seafood or shellfish, there might be, of course, a cross, cross allergy of iodine. So watch out, of course, for that one, especially if you are using, of course, the major opic dye, which is, of course, iron base. Okay? Because, again, if you give it to them, they could, they could lead, of course, to... If we have, they have an anaphylaxis, anaphylactic reaction, what will happen? How does an anaphylactic reaction affect the circulatory system or the, car, the, the cardiovascular system? Narrowing what are the anaphylactic reaction, especially of course of the cardiovascular system? Give me the specifics. Is there any constriction, of course? Is there any constriction, of course, of the arteries, of the arteries or the blood vessels, of course, in anaphylactic reaction? What happens, of course, to the blood vessel, of course, in your anaphylactic reaction? Is it constriction or vasodilation? Why? What causes the vasodilation? Is it again? We give me the specifics, of course. I want, of course, to know. I want to know, of course, if anaphylaxis is an allergic response. That's, of course, the one, one, one complication that we want, of course, to avoid. That's why we have, of course, to check for them for possible, of course, anaphylactic reactions. Anaphylactic is the end product, of course, of allergic response. Now, the question will be, of course, I said, in, in anaphylactic reaction, what happens, of course, to the, the major blood vessels? Does it constrict or dilate? Do you answer, of course, to me, of course, it causes dilation. To be specific, of course, it will cause massive vasodilation, okay? If it's vasodilation, of course, usually it will lead into, of course, a very massive decrease in blood pressure. Therefore, anaphylactic reaction, your major problem, of course, is massive hypotension, secondary to vasodilation. My question will be to be specific, of course, is that what causes the vasodilation? Is it, of course, the control in the medulla oblongata, or is it, of course, a peripheral response? to certain neuromodulator that is present during an anaphylactic reaction. Or my question is too high, too, 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 too complex. Now, my question would be yes, it is, I would agree with you, vasodilation. But what causes the vasodilation in an anaphylactic reaction? Very good. Very good. Thank you for that answer will be, of course, the release, of course, of the neuromodulator histamine. That is why you want to reverse the effect of your histamine. That's why you are giving it benefit, because histamine will be the cause of vasodilation. To be, specific, to, to, be, to be specific, of course, it will be, in terms of asthma, it will be bronchoconstriction. Again, histamine's effect, of course, in the system will be bronchoconstriction, but vasodilation. Clear. If we give epinephrine, we reverse, of course, the function or the effect, of course, of histamine. We don't want too much histamine. And again, histamine is released by the cells if they are exposed to anaphylactic reactions. Clear. It is always the histamine. That's why we have to reverse the histamine. That's why in, in massive allergies or in terms of this one, especially if the patient, of course, went into anaphylactic shock, the first medication we give to the patient will be epinephrine in order to cause massive vasoconstriction in order to reverse the vasodilation that will prevent, of course, the patient from dying. Clear? Okay? That's why you have to reverse it. Therefore, of course, allergic response, of course, could lead into one form of shock, anaphylactic shock. Okay? So in anaphylaxis, in any shock, remember, there is no effective delivery of oxygen. Okay? And watch out also for another one, your nutrients. Okay? But nutrients usually, of course, is very specific 
to pulmonary response, especially by the mast cells. That's why usually leukotriene and dragonist, of course, are being given, especially for those people who have pulmonary allergies, just like, of course, when you're bronchial asthma, as you can see there. That's one of the medication we give to asthma. But in eventuality, of course, especially with the histamine, could it affect? Yes, it could. Okay? So that's why I watch out, of course, for the diet. We don't want any allergic response. Another one will be your X-ray evaluation. Instruct the patient not to eat breakfast and to avoid before the test. Administer sedative 30 minutes to one hour before the test. Insertion, prepare usually, of course, in the groin. Okay? If we have the X-ray, if we have, of course, to do a contrast, always remember that, of course, the contrast medium will be delivered, of course, especially angiocardiogram or angiogram. The deliver, of course, will be, of course, in the vein. And usually, the most common site that we are using will be, of course, your femoral vein. Why? That is the largest one. Okay, that's the largest, of course, no, not the inferior vena cava, but again, that we could access. Okay, we cannot access directly, of course, to vena cava, we could, but again, we have, of course, to tear it down. So, usually, it will be the femoral. Although, by the miniaturization, of course, of a lot, of course, of gadgets we got, especially with the scope technology, we could utilize brachial and arterial even to do, of course, the further, the, the, the grounds, of course, if we need, of course, to do so. But to be safer, the most common site will be your femoral vein, okay? Check for allergy, it was here I've said, complaints of swollen throat, difficulty swallowing, dye irritating this to the skin. These are, of course, just such conditions that could lead to possible anaphylaxis. In any way, we don't want any anaphylactic shock, okay? Injection <coughs> side pain and swelling, apply ice pack, okay? We know that one, and again, later on, how to combat and how to prepare for allergic response, we want, of course, to know, and we're going to, of course, try to decipher. Keep the client... Uh, on bed rest, on the fully awake, instruct the client not to bend the leg. This is a very important one. Why we are not bending? Because again, one important thing is that not to prevent the clot. Another one is that to prevent, of course, bleeding in the femoral side. Okay? Why we are clot? As a matter of fact, what we are doing is we are putting sandbags on the side, in the femoral side, in order, of course, to prevent, of course, for it, of course, to develop swelling. Swelling, of course, or, or, or hematoma on that side, could lead into formation of thrombus. That's why we put some weight sandbags, called one sandbagging technique, to put, of course, there, and, of course, do not bend it to promote, of course, enough cardiac blood return to the heart in order, of course, to prevent hematoma formation. We don't want hematoma because hematomas to are the cause of two problems. One, constriction. That's, that, that's one, of course, the greatest one. One, it will be, of course, decrease in the blood return. Another one is that it could form blood clots that could lead, of course, into thrombus, Thus, it could lead, of course, to emboli formation. Okay? Because those are the things. So, observe the insertion site for bleeding, monitor vital signs, of course, for possible hemorrhage. The same is true. We have to monitor the site for possible bleeding because we cut off, of course, the major, of course, vein. Okay? Check peripheral pulses. Usually, we check the peripheral pulses in order to make sure that we have enough perfusion on both legs. That's why we are, when we are assessing, of course, the periphery of somebody who is status post angiogram or cardiac cath, we have, of course, to check the bilateral to compare in order to make sure that, again, we don't have any pulse deficit or variation in the pulse count, okay? So assess motor and sensory function. That's why anybody, was, because again, why? Pressure could build up for bleeding inside the tissues that will be the cause compression of both the circulation as well as the nerve endings. That's why we don't want any neurovascular compromise. That's why we are doing always your neurovascular check or your CMS, okay? Not only, of course, for your fractures, but also for the things, of course, that could impede possibly, of course, circulation to that area. CMS stands for, what is CMS? Center, Center for Medicaid Services. You have to check your circulation, movement, and sensation of the extremities, okay? Especially if there is possible, we call it one the CMS, not CMK, but CMS, is a check, we call it one of your neurovascular check, in order to make sure that, again, we have an intact circulation as well as sensory output, of course, in the legs, especially in the periphery. Because why? There is a potential, of course, for restriction, secondary, of course, to bleeding in the tissues or hematoma formation. Okay, so a, after any study which, of course, the femoral side is used, client should lie flat. Again, highlight, do not allow the patient to bend, and if possible, let them lie flat. Okay, the goal will be to not disrupt the circulation, and blood return, plus, of course, to prevent, of course, thrombus formation. Okay? Line blood helps prevent swelling, bruising, and bleeding at the puncture side. Follow, of course, your decisions. Order, of course, for the progression of the activity. Okay? 
Another one, of course, that will be, of course, the where do we will be your ECG. In ECG, we are checking, of course, with electrical tracing, of course, of the action of the heart. Provide information about the heart rate, rhythm disorders, inform client, the client test is painless. Usually, the most common one that we are using will be your how many leads that we are using. The most common one we use, of course, will be, of course, we are using the your 12 leads ECG, isn't that? What are the basics of ECG? ECG is the graphing, okay? We, it only tells us, of course, usually in ECG will be, is there any problem or we have an intact electrical impulse? Electricity will be the one to drive the physical contractions, of course, of the heart muscles, okay? Without that electrical impulse, the heart won't follow, or if it is going to beat, it will be gonna beat out of rhythm. In order to have an effective form, okay, of heartbeat, there should be a certain amount of relaxation, or we call it one assured repolarization, and depolarization, okay, in order, of course, to have an effective output, okay? Based, of course, your anatomy and pathology, of course, of your heart, there should be, of course, we are trying, of course, to check if there is, of course, disruption, or if there's a problem with the heartbeat. Any problems with the rhythm of the heart equals dysrhythmia, okay? And we have a lot, of course, of different form of dysrhythmia, and for each specific dysrhythmia, there should be a corresponding way to intervene, or one corresponding form of management, okay? Deviation, of course, from the normal PP, QRST indicate, of course, cardiac problems. So usually, nurses are being trained, especially if you are in the telemetry or in your, in, you are, of course, in the cardiac, in the coronary care unit or the CCU, then you have to know, of course, how to read this one. The same is true if you are in the ICU working, you have, of course, what they call as your cardiac monitor to check, of course, the heartbeat of the patient. Okay? One thing, of course, for the one is that you have to check, of course, the rhythm as well as the rate. Rate and rhythm are very important factors, of course, in reading, of course, your ECG, okay? Now, how does the ECG works? These are 12 leads, and of course, this is the diagram, of course, of your PQRST, okay? Now, could we read this one? Could we understand, of course, this one, of course, from doing things? What is P wave signified for? Tell me what is P wave. Could you, could somebody of course explain to me what is P wave, what is of course QRS, what is S, 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 T, or of course the T. I want to know what is P wave, what is QRS, and T. Again, I heard some, somebody answer. What do you mean by that? So, repolarization or depolarization? Depolarization, meaning to say release, of course, the wave. Depolarize. Okay? Repolarization is the acquisition of another, of course, round of electrical impulse. Okay? So, atrial repolarization, what do you mean by that? So now, as you can see, of course, is that in the first place, of course, is that what controls the heart rate? What controls the heart rate? There should be, of course, a pacemaker. Where do you locate? Where do you, where is your SA node located? Okay, first one, the first important thing, of course, in order for the heart, of course, to function to be, will be, of course, the electrical impulses. We have a natural pacemaker that usually, of course, regulates, of course, the rate. And again, one way to realize that lead and illustrate the beat of the heart. And again, the beating of the heart or the heart rhythm is an organized form of function. Because why? Without the electrical impulses, there should be, of course, no muscular coordination or muscular contraction. Okay, shall we say, 
First one, in order for the heart of course to function will be, again, first one is that there should be, of course, an SA. <coughs> SA node will be, of course, your pacemaker. It will release, of course, the signal. First one is that once it releases the signal, okay, where does it release the signal? It will be releasing, of course, the signal. First one will be going, of course, to the right atrium. The other one, of course, will be going to left atrium, okay? Do you get it? Once it reaches, of course, the right atrium and left atrium, the signal, of course, of the SA node, the next thing that will happen, of course, will be the atrium, both the atrium will contract, okay? When the atrium contracts, we call that one as your atrial depolarization. It is what they call your P wave. P wave signify atrial contraction. I will use the term contraction so that it will be easier. Once it contracts, it means to say that it will be the push the blood because again, to know of course that atrium are just usually of course receiving chamber. Once they receive blood, they will be the push it a little bit going down to the ventricles, both left and right atrium. Clear. So if you see a P wave there, it means to say of course that there is an SA node. Therefore, the beat usually of course will be usually coming of course from your SA node. Okay, clear. Now, from there, of course, as you can see, of course, from their SA node, some, of course, of this, 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 of course, uh, electrical impulse will then go, of course, to the junction, of course, of the atrium and the ventricle. We call them a sure AV node. The AV node collect all the potential signals from, therefore, there's, of course, a relay from SA to AV node. Okay. So does the AV node contract? No, it gathers all the impulses in the way for the strongest one before it controls, of course, the release. So usually the next part, what is the next part, of course, from AV node? Your? Bundle of keys. Where is that? Bundle of, bundle of keys, okay? The bundle of keys, of course, will be the one to potentiate, of course, bundle of keys. As you can see, bundle of keys will be potentiating, of course, the signals from the AV node, okay? And from the AV node, of course, from the AV node, of course, will be, it will be releasing, of course, to the tip of the bundle of haze. We call it one of short Perkin G fibers. The Perkin G fibers will be the one that will then stimulate all the ventricles. Therefore, once the signal goes all the Perkin G fibers, the ventricles feel now that they are ready to contract. But again, usually the one that controls it will be your AV node. Okay? When do you beat? When do you beat? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let the atrium first beat and then wait for them to relax. I can always remember that each time, of course, a muscle contract, it should be followed by a relaxation. Okay? It happens that when the atrium and the P wave beats, okay, usually it will be, followed, it will be, it will be followed by the relaxation or atrial depolarization. Repolarization. Depolarization will be the contraction. Repolarization will be the resting. Okay? And usually, this QRS, this is, of course, your QRS, isn't it? The QRS signifies, of course, your ventricular, ventricular contraction. Okay? Now, since contraction, of course, will be followed, of course, by what it will assure repolarization or resting phase, okay? This T signifies one thing, okay? Ventricular repolarization or relaxation. <laughs> now my question will be, atrium contract, atrium relax, ventricle of course contract, ventricles relax. That's the what is of course your ECG tracing. We are of course following. The question will be, P wave, RALA, of course, we call that one contractions. They have to relax first, isn't it? The only thing for the question is that why we cannot see, of course, here, of course, your atrial relaxation or atrial depolarization? Because according to the book, of course, is that we cannot see because, again, why? When the atrium relax, the ventricle contracts at the same time. Therefore, if you're going to ask me where is, of course, your, your atrial relaxation, it is on the back of your QRS. And QRS is big because it's ventricular contraction. Therefore, you cannot see, of course, your 
atrial contraction. Again, atrial, rela atrial relaxation as well as ventricular contraction occur at the same time. Therefore, what you can see, of course, in ECG tracing is the QRS, which is only signifying, of course, your ventricular contraction. And you cannot see, of course, your atrial relaxation because it is mass, it is covered by your QRS complex. But always remember, is there atrial relaxation? Yes, indeed. The only thing is that we cannot see in the, in the of course, in your ECG tracing. It, what, of course, what signifies, of course, what way it signifies, of course, that indeed, all the impulses has been through, of course, all the ventricles. It means to say that the ventricles now is trying to relax. It is, of course, your T wave. Clear? Do you get it? Okay, this is the simplest way, of course, of explaining what is, of course, your ECG. Now, if you want, of course, to identify the strips, just come back, of course, for your ECG class. Okay? But as I say, want you to understand, of course, what's the significance, of course, for this one. Like, for example, Why it's very important for me, of course, to tell you? Because again, for every SA node, we know, of course, the rate. Like, for example, if you see one time, of course, that, like, for example, this simple thing, if you see, of course, that we don't have any, we don't have any, of course, P wave, only, of course, QRS and T wave, it means to say, of course, that we have a damage SA node. You get what I mean? Okay? If you don't see any, any P wave, of course, in the CG strip, it means to say, of course, that usually, of course, that we have a damage SA node. It might be, of course, that the area who contains, of course, the SA node might be, of course, having myocardial fraction. Okay? Another one for that one is that SA is beating. There's, of course, a regular P wave. But again, it is followed, of course, by prolonged P wave, and the QRS doesn't follow through. It means to say, of course, that if you have a regular P wave, and of course, the AV that you have, of course, your QRS is always delayed, of course, in responding, of course, to the SA, no, SA, SA signal. It means to say that simple things. You have a block that is significant, of course, of your AV block. Do you get what I mean? Okay? So, another one, of course, for the one, of course, will be if you can see, of course, that we have multiple, of course, P waves. Okay? Or we call this one is that usually, of course, we have this one, and usually it's followed, of course, by one QRS. Another one, of course, is a big QRS. Okay? So usually this, this one, this P wave, you should, should normally be followed, of course, by another P wave. Isn't it? Now, if your P wave is followed by sometimes, of course, a small QRS, and then another big QRS or two QRS, there's what we call as your premature ventricular contraction, or your PVC. Okay? So that's just one example, of course, of your one, of course, of your dysrhythmias. Therefore, there might be, of course, if you have PVC, it means to say that, besides, of course, your SA node, there is another focal area that tries to trigger, of course, your ventricles to beat. Do you get the point? There's a simple way, of course, of understanding what is, of course, this ECG all about. In order to study in advance for that one, you could go deeper for that one. But again, the essential, of course, what is P wave? P wave is atrial contraction, okay? QRS, ventricular contraction, T wave ventricular relaxation. Now the question will be, where is, where is, of course, your atrial relaxation? It is on the back of the QRS. We can see it. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is just simply, of course, your short course for your ECG. Now, another test, of course, that we are doing is your stress test. Okay, in stress test, of course, we have to make sure, usually where we do stress test, especially for those people who have to undergo major surgery. Right? We want to know if the heart is capable of undergoing stress, especially, of course, surgery or whatever, of course, major activities. Okay? So usually, of course, stress test, the purpose for this one is the accessibility, of course, of symptomatic and asymptomatic cardiac disease. Usually, the best way to do that one is that we have to subject the heart for stress. One way to do that one is that we have to run in a treadmill or walk in a treadmill. Okay? Another one for that one, at the same time, we have to monitor the heart function. One way to do this one is that we attach, of course, your ECG leads in order to check, of course, the rhythm, the rate, of course, of the heart, how it's responding to stress. Okay? So one way to do that one is that ECG blood pressure measurements taken while the client pedal stationary bicycle or work in treadmill. Because, but sometimes some people, how about if some people, of course, cannot walk anymore? Okay? So we could do that one, but we don't need, of course, to undergo this physical bicycle or physical, physical, of course, treadmill. We could give medication in order, of course, to increase the strength of the heart. 
This could be thallium, piperidomol, or the bitumen hydrochloride may be injected during the test. Still, at the same time, we are monitoring blood pressure in ECG because this one could increase the workload of the heart, subjecting the heart into stress. Okay? Use instead of test in individuals who are older and cannot tolerate activity. So the test determines, of course, if the heart responds to physical activity or medication, appropriate exercise program, and methods, of course, of treatment will be prescribed. This is usually to check if we have problems with the heart. Okay? The same is true sometimes. That stress test is being done for people who are, of course, be subjected to severe conditions, just like, of course, surgery, major surgery. Okay? So that, again, we could try, of course, to correct or intervene, of course, in order to improve cardiac function, in order to prevent, in order to maintain heart function at the same time, to lessen, of course, the risk for whatever, of course, intervention that the patient, of course, will be subjected to. Okay? So sometimes it's going to produce, of course, problems just like blood pressure elevation, or probably, of course, prob problems with the tracing, of course, in the, your ECG, then medication, of course, could be indicated. In order, of course, to do this, why? It is recommended, of course, for us, of, for those people who cannot lose weight, to maintain, of course, the close weight, just to subject yourself, of course, to the cardiac program. We call it one cardio. That's why the term cardio is cardio exercises. It is just only like, how, how, do, how do you, of course, what do you recommend, of course, cardio exercise? Walking. Walking for? Is sex included, Alejandro? I don't think so. And then sex, you didn't think so. Six. Okay, so you did sex, so, okay. So well, how, in what you sleep the frequency? 30 minutes. How, how often? Every 30 minutes. Every day. 30 minutes, when? Every day. Every day? For the rest of your life? <laughs> the minimum requirement, of course, will be, of course, some cardio, of course, will be requiring it at least three times a week. But again, usually, the better, of course, will be, of course, is that, usually, at least 30 minutes of walking. Walking is the best one because why walking doesn't, of course, strain your knee joints, okay? Walking, of course, for 30 minutes for most of the days of the week. That will be the recommendation. Therefore, if you can do it, of course, seven days a week, the better. The better for your heart. Again, the benefit, of course, of exercise cannot be undermined. There, is, there are more complications rather than benefit when you start exercising, okay? So this will, of course, we recommend it was 30 minutes, of course, Usually, of course, three to five times a week. Or, shall we say, 30 minutes a day with most days of the week. Okay? That's usually, of course, the best response, of course, how to maintain heart health. Okay? The same is true if you want, of course, to form your body. This different story that will be, of course, more intense exercise. Another one, of course, is if you want, of course, to lose weight, will be more. And then, losing weight is a combination more, of course, of the technique, of course, of exercise plus, of course, diet management. Okay? Okay. So another one is your echocardiogram. In echocardiogram, of course, you use sound waves. So we need to say, in echocardiogram, do we use ultrasound? Sound waves. In echocardiogram, do we use sound? Sound technique. Usually sound waves to produce, of course, a 3D view, of course, of the heart. Usually echocardiogram, what are the tests that we want, of course, to see? First one is that we want to check, of course, the heart size. Valvular function, how they close, do they regurgitate, do they close fully, or probably it was a problem for the heart, or probably excess fluid. So we want to see the ejection fraction, of course, of the heart, how does it eject, how does it open, how does it close, okay? Shows, of course, the size of individual heart chambers, if we have, of course, cardiomyopathy, wherein we call it one as your dilated heart disorders, okay? Useful diagnosis message of heart murmurs. One important thing for the one is that when you speak of the echocardiogram, or echocardiogram, of course, will be we're checking, of course, the inside chamber of the heart to be specific. Okay? The volume, the size, the size totality of the heart, the size, of course, of the chambers of the heart is very important. Another one is that the health of the valves, which is very important. How they close? Do we have a backflow? So usually, echocardiogram will be helping, of course, in the fixation for the one. How do we do that one is that? We could use that one, but the more specific one is that we are inserting, of course, the lead or the, the, the tip, of course, that the, the monitors the probe, of course, will be in your tracheoesophageal is is echocardiography, meaning to say, we put, of course, a probe inside, of course, the esophagus, closer, of course, to the heart, where we could get, of course, a better, of course, three dimensional view of, of the heart in the relative, of course, for the sound waves. Okay? So, TEE is the most common one thing, of course, that we will be doing in order to have, of course, the higher yield or higher definition results, of course of the 3D 
view, of course, on the heart, especially in the chambers. So just like if you have mitral valve prolapse, it could be seen, of course, usefully, of course, in your echocardiogram. Do you have, of course, CHF? It could be seen here, too, okay? Another one is that, do you have, of course, heart valve pro prolapse or heart valve damage? Do you have endocarditis? It could be seen here. Another one is that, that do you have, of course, the sequelae, of course, of neurobotic heart disease? You can see, of course, that one in the echocardiogram, okay? This is a 3D, of course, using, of course, the sound waves in order, of course, to visualize the structure of the chambers, especially of the heart itself. Nuclear scan, detect ischemic patterns, assess, assess viable myocardium, usually weak radioactive chemical emission intravenously, IV for better view, of course, of the heart chamber or myocardium. Especially, usually, detects ischemic pattern, especially status post PIA or MI, in order to check, of course, if we have, of course, the viable myocardium. So, but sometimes, of course, if it's still viable, then probably we could do, of course, some things in order to improve, of course, the circulation of the area. But sometimes, if usually, of course, it's not viable, so usually there's nothing much, of course, we can do. But nuclear scan, of course, will be utilization of radioactive chemicals, of course, IV, and usually it will be administered, of course, either primarily, of course, through your femoral vein, okay? Another one is EPS, with your electrophysiological study or your EPS. In your EPS, Determines most effective medication to control the dyspnea. EPS is directed, of course, one, identification of your dyspnea. Not only that one, but also, of course, trying to give actual management if your dyspnea will respond. So how do we do it in EPS? Perform in cardiovascular lab. Takes, of course, approximately two to three hours. Why? What we do? Usually, of course, probe could be inserted into the heart. And again, here, the, card, the cardiologist will get a deliver, mimic, of course, the dysrhythmia that the patient, of course, is suffering. So, I'll deliver, of course, a normal heart rhythm. Now, the watch the catheter tip with multiple electrodes. But we don't stop there. Once the patient goes into the kind or the most common problem with the gap in terms of rhythm, or the, pa the patient engaged in that dysrhythmia, the next phase will be done. We try, of course, usually medication to manage, of course, the dysrhythmia. Okay, so many could say, we create an actual dysrhythmia, under the supervision of the cardiologist, in, and again here, we try to manage it with different medications, probably, and what is the most effective medication. So after that one, we stop, of course, the EPS, and then what we have reached is, of course, a medication that is very specific to the patient's form of this treatment. Therefore, it is one form, of course, of acquiring an individualized form of this, this rhythmia, or arrhythmia, of course, management. Okay? Because sometimes, there are some medication that will be used, of course, for the patient, but again, it might not be, of course, effective on, different, on a different patient. Therefore, how do we do the point that we create an EPS in order, of course, to make sure or tailor, of course, a form of management to a specific patient in terms, of course, of how their dysrhythmia develops and how the dysrhythmia responds to certain medication. Okay? Okay. That's electrophysiology study. Why? Because this, of course, invasion, of course, is, is a ma major, of course, invas invasive procedure, informed consent, MPO, after midnight, sedative, of course, ordered for relaxation. So, usually, we have your sand to be done, of course, during this procedure. After procedure, cover the catheter insertion site with bandage, client, bed rest, of course, for one to two hours, okay? Usually, if it's femoral, it will be longer than that. Check vital signs every 15, until stable, then check, of course, for possible, all the list, of course, past complications, bleeding on the site. But still, we have, of course, to check the patient, that it is, of course, not bleeding, or else we might lose, of course, a lot of course of blood, okay? Another condition, of course, is that to visualize, to check, or probably to insert a balloon, to widen, or usually, of course, we could do, of course, a cleaning, of course, of the blood vessel. We could only reach it one by insertion, of course, of your catheter. So usually, we call this one as your cardiac catheterization. Again, angiogram could be done in cardiac cath lab. Okay, nuclear scan, nuclear scan could be there, okay, <coughs> EPS could be there, of course, in your cardiac cath lab, because why? We are inserting catheter, of course, into the circulatory system. And again, the most common insertion site will be, of course, your <coughs> femoral. We could use the brachial, we could use, again, if it's smaller, we could use, of course, the, the we could use, of course, the, 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 the smaller the smaller veins, but again, the commonly, of course, we use, of course, the, the femoral vein because it's the, the biggest one, okay? Here in cardiac catheter is measure of constant concentration, determine cardiac output, assess heart structures and chambers. So what we do is that we insert, of course, a catheter, 
Usually we invade, of course, the left side or the right side. We measure uh, the actual pressure inside it. Okay? Sometimes the one way, of course, especially when they work in ICU, I really love, of course, people, patients, of course, who are what we call as your A line or your arterial line. Because in the arterial line, it's way, of course, one way that we have a probe inside the aorta in order to measure, of course, your blood pressure real time. Okay? So that could be, of course, done through, of course, your cardiac catheterization. One way to do that one is that to make sure, of course, that we can assess heart structures. Could we visualize it? Yes, we could. So in cardiac catheterization, we could do a lot of things. We could, again, this is, of course, a form, of course, of scoop technology. So we could, of course, do a lot of things. See, visualize structures. We could do intervention, of course, in the cardiac cath lab. Okay? Maybe perform during a new cardiogram. Usually, we do this one during a new cardiogram. Okay? Therapeutic treatment during catheterization would be repair of the heart. Okay, open valves, dilate arteries. So again, we could dilate arteries. As a matter of fact, we could remove, as a matter of fact, of course, some atherosclerosis by putting, of course, a burr instrument, of course, at the tip, by, of course, shaving it. We call it shaving, of course, the arteries, of course, or probably we could do angioplasty with neurocardiac catheterization by inserting, of course, balloon inside, of course, a major blood vessel. Okay, procedure, long flexible catheter passed into the heart. Pressure measured, blood specimen taken. It takes, of course, at least one to three hours to do a cardiac catheterization. But sometimes it's very, very necessary. Okay? Explain painless procedure. Anesthetic will be administered. But the only thing for the one sometimes there will be a flattering feeling, especially, of course, if the catheter will be bended, of course, in order, of course, to pass through different, of course, part, of course, of the heart, the study chamber. So we, as we have said, Observe, of course, obtain, of course, sign in, in informed consent, and be for six hours, okay? After the test, assess the insertion site for bleeding or hematoma, check for peripheral pulses. The same thing if you puncture the femoral vein, okay? As a matter of fact, keep them flat to be specific for around, of course, at least six to eight hours. Put sandbag to prevent hematoma, and then do not bend it to, to prevent, of course, thrombus formation or blood clot formation, and to maintain circulation, of course, to that area. Check for your CMS bilateral to make sure that there is no neurovascular compromise, meaning both the circulation going to those extremities is not compromised. The same thing, of course, is that your nerve endings is not being blocked or compressed. Yeah? <coughs> Immediately report, of course, clients rapid or regular pulse after cardiac catheterization. It may indicate that there will be heart valve damage or another one will be clot formation or hemorrhage. Also, immediately report any complaint of chest or insertion side pain, okay? Or else, of course, that will be, of course, corresponding the problem that needs, of course, to be evaluated. It might be, of course, an underlying problem or a complication, of course, of your cardiac catheterization, okay? Cardiac catheterization is the most common one that's being done in order to evaluate the heart chambers of the heart. But usually, remember, if you insert something there, it means to say that you create a wound. Again, the normal body's response to a certain wound in the blood vessel is always... Because, of course, the body, of course, wants, of course, to prevent bleeding. Therefore, clotting, again, especially in respect to injury, of course, will be watching out, of course, for the clot formation that might be, of course, graver or more severe that will be lead to thrombus formation and embolic formation. Okay? So, there will be, of course, a lot of treatments for this one. Yes, we have some drugs, of course, to be given. During... Yes? Any question? I know the drugs that can uh, prevent the clots. Okay, we're going to talk about the one. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'm there already. Okay, so again, we have common medical treatments. And again, we speak, of course, of medical treatments. Usually, of course, we are using, of course, either in the independent intervention. We have two forms of treatments, medical and surgical. Okay, in any problems with, in the heart, if it can be managed by the, by, by the medical treatment, just like for the most common Medical treatments that we are doing will be, of course, your pharmacological or drugs, okay, or medication. If it can be answered by the one, then we then go to the next step, which is, of course, your surgical intervention, okay? In pharmacological therapy, the cardiovascular disorders, some, of course, emergency drug could be given. Okay? One of this medication will be, of course, your thrombolytic therapy, okay? And thrombolytic therapy cannot be done by only regular nurse. You have to use, it should be used, it should be only be delivered, of course, by somebody who is trained, of course, for this medications. Okay? These are, of course, your thrombolytics. Again, what is the difference between thrombolytic and your, 
What's the other one? Trombolytic and um, Trombolytics, the other one, of course, will be what do you call your, your blood thinners? Anticoagulant, okay? Now, my question will be is that what is the difference between anticoagulant and trombolytics? Um, anticoagulant, doesn't that try to prevent like a, uh, like a blood clot? And then trombolytics is what, like, gets rid of it? Yeah, decreases the clot. Dissipates. Wow, it's a very big term. Dissipates. So, did everybody understand the term dissipate? Do you get what is dissipate? It's a higher English, okay? Now. Okay. Yeah, it dissipates, of course, blood clots. That's one way of course of saying that. Okay. So, give me an example of anticoagulant. My question will be, of course, is that what will be, of course, the most commonly used IV anticoagulant? Heparin. 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 And the only, not? Heparin. Comodin is only PO. Warfarin. Warfarin is comodin that is PO. I, my question will be, what is the only anticoagulant that could be given IV? Heparin. Are they sure? Heparin. Okay. Even your inoxaparin lobinox is not being given IV. It is being given subcutaneous. Okay. Regularly, of course, your heparin and heparin, of course, like products, just like your enoxaparin, okay, will be given subcutaneous. That's the most common one. But in the event, of course, that we have some existing problem, that we have, of course, deep vein thrombosis or having a problem, of course, with thrombus that is present on hand, just like, of course, blockage, of course, of a certain blood vessel, then we could give, of course, heparin in order to prevent further clotting, okay? Does heparin dissolve clot? The answer is no, but it is a massive medication to prevent blood clotting, okay? So therefore, example, if you have problems, of course, with the heart, shall we say, one of the coronary blood vessels is being obstructed by a thrombus or probably an emboli who dislodge, of course, in the coronary artery, either it is, of course, right or left, of course, circumflex artery, shall we say, it blocked at one. We cannot give heparin because, again, I always remember time element is very important in myocardial infarction because, again, a portion of the heart that does not receive any oxygen will going to die. Therefore, we, our goal will be, of course, reoxygenate, of course, that part of the heart or else the patient will die or that portion of the heart will die, okay? To prevent from happening, usually one way to do that one is that could we unclog the clot, okay? One way to give that one is that we have to give a medication that could be sold the clot. That's why the term, of course, your thrombolytic, from the word thrombo means blood clot, lytic means lysis meaning to say it dissolves or dissipates. Okay? So thrombolytics, therefore, are medication that could be, of course, used to declot because, of course, they could dissolve blood clots. Okay? That is provided you don't have a wound on your blood vessel. Again, that's why one of the treatments, especially in the cardiac in the MI, will be your thrombolytic agents. But there is some criteria to be given, of course, a thrombolytic agents. Okay? Another thing for the one is that commonly, most common one is that could be used at one for a stroke. Could be used thrombolytics for a stroke. If somebody got a stroke, could be used, of course, thrombolytics. Yeah. And MI. If we have an MI, if we have, of course, an identified area that is clotted, the number one treatment, by the way, you reverse the clot and clog it. Usually, of course, the first attempt will be, of course, thrombolytics. If it cannot be dissolved, then we have to do a coronary artery bypass clot. Okay? But first things first will be thrombolytics to be given right away. Okay? But in stroke, thrombolytics could help, but that is not the primary treatment. Because why? Stroke could be to in two natures. It could be ischemic, then secondary, of course, to blood clot, or it could be hemorrhagic, secondary, of course, to ruptured aneurysm. Therefore, we don't give, of course, thrombolytics right away because if the problem, of course, is a ruptured aneurysm, you will cause massive bleeding in the brain and instantaneous death of the patient. Okay? That is why, that's the reason why, why we are not using thrombolytic agents as a primary treatment 
in CBA. Because in CBA, we have to establish first, what is the cause of the CBA? Is it ischemic or hemorrhagic? If it is, of course, ischemic, yes, we could. But if it's, of course, hemorrhagic, then you are killing, of course, the patient, of course, right there and then. Okay? So thrombolytics will be in the streptokinase, okay? Urokinase and alteplase. This are alteplase, of course, usually, of course, will be the term, they are classified as your TPA, okay? What's TPA means? TPA. Small t and TA. Okay? All the thrombolytics, streptokinase, urokinase, are, of course, the thrombolytics, to be specific. But we have another enzyme, of course, to be specific. We call it one as your TPA. Other places is one of them. Brand name for it, one of course will be TPA. Another one, other place, of course, for this one will be your cath flow. This is, of course, the medication that I handle almost every day to unclog, of course, my catheter. My central line, my central line catheter. If they cannot give me the correct blood flow that I need. Okay? TPA is also known as your tissue plus melogen activator. One TPA drug is your other place. Brand name, cath flow. Okay, or other things. But again, there are three major medications of streptokinase, urokinase, and their other place. Okay, what they do? Give them, and therefore, we are giving them, what's the route of this? The only route for them to be given is your IV. Because we have to unplug it right away before we have to give it that. Okay, nurses administer the specific drugs through, of course, a peripheral vein. We have to be, it should be, it should be always IV, never IM. If you're gonna do it, IM was the use of it, okay? Okay, so that's what we'll do for pharmacological treatment. So usually these are the criteria. First one, history of chest pain. Okay, commonly of course is that past six hours. Okay, it should be of course after six hours of course of thrombolytic therapy. Usually of course if it's not reversed within the time, you can do thrombolytic. Ischemia of the heart persisting after administration of sublingual nitroglycerin, meaning to say that, remember, if we have chest pain and we give uh, and we give sublingual nitroglycerin, just from the pain is still there. It's one of those of the criteria. People, of course, can receive of course the treatment. No recent history, of course, of surgery because anybody who has recent surgery, you give TPA or your primary neurolytics, they will just be explode all over the body. Okay, cardiac nerve resuscitation because you have injury, of course, inside. So again. You cannot give a thrombolytic therapy to anybody who has history of injury to the blood vessels. Because why? It will unclog the clot. If you have, of course, a major blood vessel wound, it will open, tear up again, of course, the blood vessel. It creates massive bleeding. Therefore, anybody who has full surgery, you cannot use TPA or your, you, or, or your of course, thrombolytic agents. Okay? Cerebral vascular accident, you check first. Not all CVA could be utilized because if it is hemorrhagic, no thrombolytics, or else the patient will die with massive hemorrhage. Bleeding abnormalities interfering on the neoplasm because, again, you will co cause bleeding. Recent head injury, pregnancy, if you are pregnant, we don't want you, to, of course, to use, to use TPA, okay? Or allergy to any form of your streptokinase, okay? So those are the most important things. Again, it, it should be, of course, all those things, the criteria, in order to use TPA, okay? One form of the use of TPA is to unplug, of course, some catheters, especially the central venous catheters, or sometimes, of course, we use this one ashore to unplug, of course, your clotted, peripherally inserted central catheter, or your thick lines, okay? So that's one important thing. Nurse's role, assess for complication, this weakness, bleeding is a big time in trouble with it, okay? Check for blood pressure. Check for signs, of course, of bleeding that could be seen, not only because your blood pressure, but also check, of course, for signs, of course, of leukemosis, PTK, or your hematoma formation, okay? Check close observation client and CCU for one to two days. As a matter of fact, if you use, of course, TPA, thrombolytic therapy, okay? That's the client, of course, should be monitored in your coronary care unit for at least two days before they are re re released, of course, to the medical ward. ward. Either this, of course, telemetry, but usually but they have to step down in telemetry. All ICU clients, of course, that has problems, of course, with the heart, usually step down to telemetry in order to monitor, of course, their heart patterns and rhythm in order, of course, to make sure that indeed they don't have any problems with this weakness. Okay. Common surgical treatments will be, of course, your, your PTCA. In PTCA, what we do, of course, is that balloon tip catheter inserted into the client's narrow coronary artery, radioopic dye injected, okay, usually, in order to, we could use it one, okay, widen arteries opening improves blood flow, of course, the heart muscles. 
These are one, of course, your PTC or percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. So in the, what we do is to hear what was that. We insert, of course, a catheter, balloon tip. The purpose for this one is that if we have, of course, a narrow catheter, just like ischemia, we could widen it up. As a matter of fact, of course, is that we could also use instrument, okay? We could be done, of course, with cardiac cath lab, of course, with cardiac cath lab. Atherectomy, using catheter device, of course, we're taking shaver, the tip. What we do here is that we shave, of course, the atherosclerosis area. And we know the atherosclerosis area is usually primarily built up, of course, on your low-density lipoprotein or your cholesterol, plus, of course, your blood clot formation, okay? Laser angioplasty alone, you know, in conjunction, of course, with balloon laser, la la laser light vaporizes plot, long-term success will be placed in the stent. Sometimes, if we remove, of course, a blockage there, sometimes the blood vessel wall is so weak, it will collapse. That is why you could hear, of course, that after the PTCA, they put, of course, a wire coil, okay? A coil of wire, just like, of course, in your pen, in your, in your pen, we have your coil or wire coil, or it's just like a spring. Okay, we call that one as your wire coil. This wire coil are about to come ashore, stents. We leave it there, therefore, of course, that the probability of maintaining it open is very is better, of course, compared, of course, to removing the blockage and leaving it, of course, there's a probability for it to collapse. Because once we shave, of course, the wall of the arteries, we thin it. Therefore, sometimes they collapse and they will be a constraint, causing another blockage. But again, doctors, of course, are using stent or wire coils in order to keep it open. So again, the key here is that once we remove the blockage, we keep it open in order, especially for the heart muscles, to be properly perfused with oxygen. Usually, the most common part, of course, that we are using is your coronary angioplasty, which is very important because, again, why? Any part of the heart that is not receiving enough oxygen, we're going to die. We're going to cause MI. Okay? And MI, if not managed properly, will going to cause, of course, the patient to die. Remember the mandate of the heart, okay? 23, 23 days after fertilization, embryonic stage, the heart starts beating. It will only stop if the patient dies, okay? So this is, of course, the mandate, of course, of the heart. We could artificially stop it if we could do surgery, but again, there should be, of course, a heart-lung machine in order, of course, to be utilized, in order to maintain, of course, the heart from functioning. Or there should be somebody or a, a machine that will function for both oxygenator as well as circulating, of course, the blood throughout the system. Okay? So that's one thing. But here, of course, keeping the stent, keeping it open, which will, will be, of course, sometimes, if they have, of course, a, an area in the brain, sometimes you could do stenting, of course, in the brain, a secondary, of course, for possible, of course, blockage or thrombus formation if they remove it. Okay? So this is, of course, your PDCA. This is your artery wall. It is really, of course, one way to do that one is that we insert, of course, a balloon tip and we inflate the balloon. So usually, of course, it is removed. That's one way, of course, for your balloon angioplasty. Okay? Or another method for the one is that we insert, of course, an obturator or a shading device. We scrape this one. But when we scrape this one, we thin, of course, the area. We leave a stand, stand and then we keep it open for quite some time. Some people, of course, will have a stent. Again, not only heart, coronary arteries, you could put a stent. We could also put a stent in any major blood vessels. Some of it, of course, will be, they have, of course, a stent in their renal artery in order to make sure, of course, that their kidney is receiving enough perfusion. Okay? But here, because we're talking cardiac, primary organ, of course, that we have to stand, of course, will be your coronary blood vessels. This stent, your coronary this stent, uh permanently? We can keep it stay there forever. And we can keep it open. So usually we will develop it in the, in the future, but usually the chances, of course, of keeping it open by leaving it there is 35%. If you remove it, just like in balloon or hypnotic, there's a high probability, of course, of, closure, of closing back again. But if there's a stent, 35% higher probability to keep it open. That's why we leave it, the stent, we leave it there, okay? And we want, of course, to know the material that we are using. Because again, remember, in this stand, just using a wire coil, these people are not candidate, of course, for MRI. Watch out for this one, okay? Especially if they are metal coils, of course. Again, standing could be a wire coil. It could be a synthetic one that could be good undergo. But sometimes, depending on the material that they are used. Therefore, people with stand or filters, watch out if there's metals. Or those people, again, another one, of course, with mechanical heart valves. These are also the people to add up the list, of course, for those who cannot be undergoing MRI. Clear? Mm -hmm. 
I think we're gonna pause here for a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some uh, abnormal abnormal beat. If that is abnormal beat, of course that will be be disturbing the rhythm of the heart. Then we could of course feel the portion of course of the myocardium. Still, it is being done in a beating heart. We call it one even if we open the thoracic cage, we still flow, we call it a closed heart surgery. So basically the great difference for the one is that open heart surgery is that opening or operating the heart by stopping the heart. Okay? Sometimes we could go through and through of course the heart, but we don't of course to stop the, the heart rate. Therefore it is still considered as closed heart surgery. Okay? So here in open heart surgery, because we stop the heart, therefore there should be somebody, or there should be of course a machine, there should be of course something that will be, of course function as the heart, because again, all the tissues of course in the body needs oxygen, therefore there should be of course a, fu a functional of course equipment that could of course circulate of course the blood throughout the system, okay? And then we call this one of course your pump oxygenator, meaning to say in a pump oxygenator to function heart in the lungs, or also sometimes the, the pump oxygenator is also known as your heart dash lung machine. So heart lung machine, or also your extracorporeal circulation, meaning to say, usually we are using the principle of osmosis, bubbling in order, of course, to put oxygen to the RBC, and then we are using the pump to deliver, of course, all these oxygenated RBCs throughout the system. Therefore, we bypass the heart, we stop the heart, we operate on the heart, but there is, of course, your pump oxygenator that will function, of course, as your heart and lung. Okay? So because, again, sometimes we need, of course, to stop it in order to do surgery. Most often, this is being done, especially when we are doing heart transplant. So we have, of course, to remove the old heart. We have to do a bypass, for, first, of course, for the pump oxygenator. And usually, of course, we have to, of course, to change it with a new heart. Trained cardiopulmonary technician maintains, of course, the machine. The heart surgery is sometimes done under a surgical hypothermia. When we speak of surgical hypothermia, we lower down the temperature. Two things. Either we have we are lowering down the temperature in order, of course, to decrease the oxygen demand, of course, of the heart muscles. Or another one is that we are putting it, of course, in a high pressure room. So we mean to say hypothermia and of course high oxygen chamber. So we call it one hyperbaric chamber, in order, of course, to decrease or just to freeze a certain point in time, of course, the heart muscles. Okay? So sometimes it's being done, of course, in a hypothermic environment as well as a hyperbaric environment or high pressure environment. The pressure that is being built there, of course, is produced, of course, out of your oxygen. High oxygen pressure environment, which, of course, decreases, of course, the workload of the heart. Okay? So again, the great difference, we can do a lot of course of surgery. If we need, of course, to do, we have to do open heart surgery. Okay? So, or closed heart surgery. Another most often done or performed surgery is your cabbage or your CABG. It is an open heart surgery. Definitely, of course, that we have to stop, of course, the heart. Because why? We have, of course, to bypass and we have, of course, to, to, to make sure, of course, that we could do grafting. Okay? One of the most common is that saphenous vein from the leg, okay, one, of course, of the major, not the femoral, saphenous, lower, will be one, of course, of the most common donor site of, of course, of the, 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 the blood vessel. Again, take a look. Saphenous vein, but if we use this one as to bypass, the function of the vein right now is an arterial function. Because again, why? We commonly, of course, replace a coronary artery blockage. Okay? So that's one thing. We have a lot, of course, of things. We could use brachial. We could use saphenous vein. We could use internal mammary vein, of course, to do a bypass. And just when you get a bypass, this is secondary because, of course, of the fact that one problem might be that we cannot, of course, unplug and use thrombolytic anymore. Therefore, we have to do surgery. Or sometimes, it requires, of course, that rever uh, revision, of course, of the one needs, of course, right away, of course, a cabbage or artery bypass graft in order, of course, for a portion of the heart to receive oxygen. Okay? And oftentimes, when, we, when do we do this one, the, the cabbage? Usually, we do that one as a one of the surgical intervention in your myocardial infarction. Because in your MI, in your cardiac arrest, the main problem there is blockage or your thrombosis. Okay? So if we cannot, again, remove or, or usually, of course, unclog the artery or the artery is already so hardened enough in that, of course, that we cannot, of course, reopen it, what we have to do is to, to do, of course, a bypass. Okay, grafting of vein. And sometimes in CABG, not only one artery, sometimes two arteries. I have, of course, two care of course, of a patient who was what we call a short quadruple bypass. Okay, so 
will think, of course, of the wife. It could be, of course, single, double, triple, C, E, B, G. Or the most common one, of course, would be, it could be, was up to quadruple, C, E, B, G. So again, when we speak of quadruple cabbage, meaning to say four sides has been bypassed. Okay? So again, that's one thing because if you eat, we're going to say thrives. Okay? If we cannot unplug. One important thing, of course, also is your transmyocardial, the intervascularization, or TMLR, is one of, course, of the another options. Okay? But again, usually, these things, of course, is that we could do a, a, a new channel. So again, in the heart, we, in the myocardium, we create, of course, holes or tunnels in order, of course, for the, 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 the oxygenated blood to pass by, of course, the myocardium in order for the heart muscles, of course, to access oxygen. What we do, how we do this one? Treat with severe CAD, of course, and people unable to be treated with a neoplasty or cabbage. So it, there's nothing. There's no option. If we graft it, there's nothing. Okay? We could use it. We could do that one. Because, of course, the length of the, of course, the artery involved is so big. So sometimes, this is the last option. What we do here, of course, is that use laser. What we do, of course, is that we try, of course, to borrow a hole in the myocardium in the muscles. Okay? Now, if we have, of course, a hole that is created a tunnel in the myocardium, each time that the left ventricle beat, there's a blood, of course, that will be coming towards it. Therefore, that's the only way that the myocardial muscles could access oxygen-laden RBC. Okay? So, laser allows blood flow into heart muscle even when arteries are blocked, performed on a beating heart. Therefore, your TMLR, okay, is being done close heart surgery. Okay? Unlike your cabbage, cabbage is open heart or closed heart? Open. open heart. We have to stop, of course, by passing that one. Here, because why? While once we create a hole, we want, of course, the pressure of the left ventricle to push, of course, the hole to keep it open. We want, of course, the pressure of the left ventricle. Okay? So here we an example, of course, of a double bypass. Okay? One from here is the one, of course, bypass, and another one you are using the saphenous vein. But again, not only saphenous vein, although it is the primary donor site. So we have our harvesting saphenous vein to be used, of course, on a bypass vessel. It could be internal mammary, it could be the supplying vein, and it will be, of course, other forms, of course, of veins. But again, saphenous still, of course, is the best option. Okay? So you see, of course, the blockage. We have, of course, artery graph one. In with internal, internal memory, you see internal memory could be used. Left subclavian, subclavian artery, and there's a famous one, of course, could be used, of course, as a graft. Okay? So, usually, what we do that one, and this is a form, of course, what we call a short auto graft, wherein we are utilizing, of course, the patient's own blood vessels. Therefore, our percentage per ejection is zero. Okay? Because of the fact that it is own patient's tissue. Therefore, they are 100% compatible. So cardiac surgery and heart valve, another one is your heart valve replacement. So what are the, what are your heart valves? Tell me. <coughs> what we call, of course, the valves, of course, that separate, of course, the lungs from the right ventricle. Right ventricle and lungs. What do you call the valve? Try to spin again. Take a look. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying, of course, to look for the valve that separates, of course, the lungs in the right ventricle. Good answer, me to spin because that is it's right in the right ventricle. Right ventricle. So I'm asking, of course, the right ventricle in the lungs. What type of valve is a pulmonic valve? I know it's a big one. <laughs> okay. It's a big one, yes. It's, it's, it's a humongous one. It's a mammoth one, okay? And it does not dissipate, okay? <laughs> so what kind of valve? Half moon. Three half moon. Half moon or half or semi. Moon or luna. Okay, luna or moon. Therefore, it is your... Yes, crescent shape because of the fact that it's half moon, okay? Therefore, pulmonic valve is known as your semi or semi lunar valve. Clear. The one that, of course, that separates, of course, your right, left ventricle, as well as your peripheral circulation or your static circulation is another semi lunar valve, okay? 
your aortic valve is similar donor, okay? But the valves, of course, the separates, of course, the inside chamber of the heart, especially the right ventricle, or the right atrium, go into the right ventricle to prevent regurgitation. We have, of course, your tricuspid, okay? And another one, of course, on the other side, the left ventricle, which we want, of course, to have, of course, a total closure instead of three valves. Of course, or three-sided valves, we have only two valves. We call, of course, the, the, the valve that, that, of course, that separates your left atrium and your left ventricle to be, of course, your, not semi-loner, but we call it one bivalve, okay? A bivalve or a bicuspid one, or we call that one as your? Mitral. Okay, mitral on the left, tricuspid on the right. Right, 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 more on the T. Therefore, T has a right. Right lung has three lobes. Right, of course, uh, Right ventricles, of course, has mitral valve, so T is there. Is that correct? Or tricuspid valve? Tricuspid, okay. So tricuspid on the right, three on the right. Usually it's why three on the right for both of the lung lobes, as well as, of course, the the, 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 the tree valve, the, 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 tri, the tri valve, of course, that separates, of course, the right ventricle, which is your tricuspid, okay? So bivalve, or bicuspid valve, or also known as your mitral valve, okay? So here, there are a lot of conditions that will damage, of course, the valves of the heart. One of those will be, of course, your, in children who have, of course, frequent streptococcal infection that has not been totally resolved, okay? Very common among children, especially if, one, all those, of course, infections, especially upper respiratory tract infections, are not fully managed or full, given, of course, the full completion of the antibiotic, okay? That is why, especially, of course, those what we call as your rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever, if not managed properly, will lead, of course, to the destruction, of course, of your heart valves. Mm -hmm. That's the primary target, of course, of the antigen, of the antibody, what I mean, okay? So that's why this one common cause, not only to want any infection, of course, in the blood, could possibly, of course, lead the infection in the valves of the heart or in the inner lining of the heart, known as your endocardium. Therefore, endocarditis, specifically subacute bacterial endocarditis, could damage, of course, the valve of the heart. It could even stiffen, okay? The, the, the tendons, of course, that hold, of course, this valve from preventing re, re, reflux or preventing, of course, from, it's like an umbrella, to make it, of course, a dome-like shape, okay? They could damage, of course, your tendons, we call that one as your chordae tendinae, okay? Which holds, of course, the valve to be in place and not, of course, to prolapse, okay? So, but, bacterial growth, just like in your your, of course, your rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease, endocarditis, these conditions, of course, could damage the heart, okay? One another, that would be, of course, that will not warrant valve replacement, okay? So use of artificial or mechanical valves or human heart valves. Okay? So one way, of course, to do this one is that, one, mechanical valves. Therefore, if you have, of course, a mechanical valve, artificial mechanical valves, therefore, this basically, of course, of synthetic in nature. It could be made of plastic, it could be made of synthetic material, partly metal, okay? What is, of course, the, the, the valves, of course, of your heart? Is it Hyundai, Toyota, or is it Mitsubishi, or is it Ford? Okay, so I don't know, but again, it's mechanical valve. If it's mechanical valve, there's a likelihood, of course, that it contains metal. Therefore, watch out for MRI for this patient, okay? So another one is human heart valves. And again, especially in children, we want, of course, we want especially children who has damaged, of course, heart valves. Usually, the best thing, of course, is that if we could collect a portion, of course, of their body in order to graft on that area to replace it with, with, with the heart, this would be, of course, the best thing. But even though a cadaver could provide us a heart valve, okay, what we have to do is that harvest that heart valve, okay, and, of course, put it, of course, in the replacement of another patient. Therefore, an individual, a child who had, of course, a heart valve replacement with the use, of course, of a human heart, <coughs> should be maintained at digestion medication and has the potential, of course, even if it is, of course, a baby for that heart valve to grow, okay? So therefore, the best, of course, form, of course, of, course, of a heart valve replacement will be, of course, the human heart valve. Again, this is not the totality of the heart, but the human heart valve, okay? Sometimes we could use, of course, some pigs, chicharrones, okay? Or your vaca, okay? Or your big bouillon, okay? So, so we could use that one. We could harvest, of course, their valves. Then we call this one, of course, as your xenograft. Xenograft, are, of course, are grafting, of course, of a different species of tissue. Okay, just like 
we are getting, of course, from the, the porcine, porcine, or por a pig, of course, hard valve, or another one would be bovine, okay? Bovine means, of course, from the cattle family. So those are, of course, the two close skin animals, of course, that we could use for human, okay? Porcine and bovine, okay? Bovine, is sometimes, of course, we have, of course, a graph, especially even, of course, in my line of work, of course, to do, of course, a, a, a graph, an a, oh, a heterogeneous graph. We are using, of course, a cow's blood vessel. We call it one bovine graph, which is way better, of course, from the synthetic graph because it is, of course, more organic and more pliable, okay? So that's one thing. Advantage of human heart, no need to be replaced soon, okay? But again, because why? Heart valves could be changed, of course, with the end, around 12, 15 years, or usually maximum 15 years, we have to change it again to make sure that it's fully functional. The human heart, of course, we don't need to replace it. So we need control pressure within the heart, quieter, preserved until needed, grow with the children who receive it. That's a good thing about with the human heart valve. And I'm not even talking about the entirety, of course, of the heart, but the human heart valve, okay? Is advantage of human heart valve for tissue need a more anti-rejection medication. Therefore, a patient who receives a heart a human heart valve replacement needs to be maintained in anti-rejection medication. And again, we know that anti-rejection medication, the goal of it, of course, is your immunosuppression to prevent rejection of the foreign tissue. Okay? So sometimes we need to use, of course, autograph, meaning to say it is own person's tissue. Then we don't have any rejection. 100% compatible. Irregardless if it is a twin, or regardless, of course, of it is the father, they are not 100% compatible. Therefore, anybody who receives this kind of transplant should be maintained, of course, in anti-rejection medication. Okay? And one of the medications that we are maintaining will be your cyclosporine. Okay? Uh, so major anti-rejection medication. Another one will be your sand immune. Okay? So in order, of course, to, sub to suppress your immune response as well. By the way, anybody, of course, who owns this? Is it yours? Yes, sir. So I didn't see even your footprint here or your thumb mark here. I am sorry. So I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't there's no identifiers. There's no ID, no social security. <laughs> but that's fine. Just put your name there and then leave it there, okay? Heart transplantation, okay? That's one, of course, of... Thing, okay, so where do we get, of course, heart, the heart? Of course, from the person, of course, with another heart, okay? So as a matter of fact, of course, a lot of course medication, a lot of patients, especially younger population, one of the most common, of course, recipients of heart problems or heart transplants are children status post rheumatic heart disease, okay? Rheumatic heart disease will be the damage, of course, the entirety, of course, of the heart, Making, of course, the patient, of course, to have full-blown CHF, and there's no form of correction. The only correction, of course, for the heart, for their heart is not replacing, but replace, replacing of the valves, but replacing the entirety of the heart. Okay? So this is what we call the heart transplant. Greatest associated problem, rejection by the body, drug, and that's why we have to maintain, of course, an immunosuppression, of course, to prevent rejection. Okay? What's that, of course, the movie about heart transplant, of course, that he... he he, of course, he, he tried, of course, to prostate the entire hospital. And he went, of course, to the doctor at gunpoint, of course, to open his heart and get his heart to be transplanted to his heart. Correct. And what's the movie title? What's that? Something with a Q. John yeah. Okay. So that's one thing. But if you're going to see this one, but the good thing is that there's, a, there's of course, another CD, of course, that... There's, of course, an accident, and then, of course, the patient, the, 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 that person is, happened, of course, to have, of course, a uh, organ donor. Okay, so we were able, of course, to remove the heart. And it, it's an obvious, of course, that the gun is using is empty. Okay? So that's one thing. Okay. Providing care to pre pre good nutrition will be important. Okay? Extra effort for the body vitamin. Again, usually we try to condition the body to the best possible thing, of course, in order, of course, to listen the risk, the risk, of course, for possible major complications, of course, post-surgery. Post-operative energy care, again, tissue oxygenation, assess cardiac function, therefore we want, once we replace, of course, the, the, the surgery, the heart, or we replace a part of it, we have to maintain, of course, that it is functioning very well, okay? So monitoring body temperature, relief pain, because again, in the rise, of course, the temperature could signify, of course, another potential complication of the surgery, infection, okay? So in the nursing process, carefully assess, of course, 
patients to put change as a course of being health history. So we do that one before, of course, regularly if we have two cardiovascular assessments. So what are the things, of course, we have to do? Again, mechanical heart valve, okay, is always notorious, of course, to have what we call a sure click, okay? Therefore, it will be a simple visit to your heart, heart sounds. You can see, of course, an artificial click. It is very familiar, of course, for those clicks, of course, to be present, of course, in mechanical valve closure. Okay? So that's one thing. But so, heart sounds, blood pressure, pulse will be a very integral part, of course, that we have an effective heart that is pumping and delivering, of course, correct amount and pressure, of course, of blood all throughout the system. Note specific signs of symptoms, shortness of breath, or fatigue will be for significant factors, of course, that we don't have, again, shortness of breath, effective oxygenation, and another one, of course, is that fatigue will be, of course, ineffective perfusion, okay? So observe clients' emotional response to disorder, understand, of course, the treatment. So signs and symptoms of cardiovascular problems, take a look, of course, on your table. It will be general, but we will going to talk about specific, of course, of the symptoms based, of course, on the specific disorders, okay? So a lot, of course, of nursing problems exist fluid volume, probably, because, again, it will be compared to social interaction, disturbed patterns. These are just few, of course, of the nursing nursing diagnosis that we could have, of course, on people or patients having cardiac disorders. Okay? So now, for client undergoing diagnostic test procedures, okay, for client with heart or blood vessel disorder, assist in meeting daily needs. Stroke will not be, of course, discussed here, but we'll be discuss it next week because it will be PVD. As you can notice, the first 19 pages of this cardiac disorders chapter will be talking about the cardiac. The second one, of course, after the, the 20th page, of course, will be saying, of course, that these are, of course, the, 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 the patients, of course, with your blood vessel disorders, either both arterial and, of course, your venous. So we're going to talk about that one next week. Therefore, the entire chapter, uh, we, we stop only until, of course, the, until, of course, MI, I believe. Okay, after that one, after the MI, usually we're going to talk about next week, of course, to, to focus more on the PVD or peripheral vascular disorders, which the exam could be, will be incorporated in your book. Okay? As you can see, of course, in your chapters in your book. Mm -hmm. Chronic disability, so assist with psycholo psychological, of course, problems. Client needs, of course, to understand disorders, prognosis, and treatment. Okay? So teaching about prevention. So what is the best thing, of course, to teach, of course, to avoid cardiovascular related disorders. So one will be smoking. Teach predisposing factors, healthy diet, what is made of fruits of your diet, okay? At least three servings, of course, a day of fruits and vegetables, okay? So again, the best and most form of diet that we recommend will be what kind of method? Your plate method. We're in half of it, okay? Half of it are vegetables and fruits. Okay, one fourth of it will be grains, okay, and one fourth of it, okay, will be protein. The fat will be only a dash of fat. No more, no less. So this is the recommendation. So the bulk of our diet, of course, to have a healthy food. But you know what? It's always very hard for us to eat all vegetables, isn't it? We are only bored. We are not only, of course, your herbivore that we have to go out and then grab some, some plants and then eat, isn't it? We are not elephants. We are not horses. We are human. Okay, therefore, we have, of course, to eat elephant, horses, goats, okay, or something like that one, or fish, okay? But again, limitation. But sometimes I have to say, of course, it is the reality of it. And the risk, the number one risk for us, of course, why we, why, of course, cardiovascular and related disorders is the number one death cause for the United States of America because of course, primary over diet. Yeah? Exercise, again. Exercise, good for the heart, will be at least 30 minutes a day. Most days of the week. That's one. If you want, of course, to shape your bodies, then, of course, there's a different story. Or if you want to lose weight, there's a different story. Okay? If you want, of course, your body to be 36, 26, 36, then you have, of course, to have, of course, a trainer for that one. If you're contented with your body, oh, that's, of course, a Coke in, a, a Coke in bottle, isn't it? But if your body will be, of course, 36, 36, 36, then you are a Coke. Sometimes if you have 46, 46, of course, 46, probably it was a bigger can. Okay? <laughs> probably you're no longer a coke. You're, no longer, you're already a monster. Uh. <laughs> but if you're sexy still, it's like, of course, 48, 32, 48, then for you will be a two, two liter, of course, coke in a bottle. <laughs> 
But again, the only thing for that one is that there's no, always remember, losing weight in a desirable weight will gonna have more benefit than, of course, possible, of course, use it or liable of it. Yeah? Exercise to strengthen the heart, okay? That's excluding sex, okay? Sex will be just be part of it, but again, it's not primarily done because, again, a good heart. Will be, of course, a very important thing, of course, as a part of that one is that if your heart is good, that's why Cialis is always, of course, has that caption. Ask your, your Viagra, of course, has a caption. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Okay? So the question commonly, of course, for that one is that, when, now, for example, this is a question later on my cardiac infarction. Ask me. The question will be the thing is, really, when am I going, of course, to have sex again? So that's a question, isn't it? If, if a patient status post MI, okay, after post-traumatic therapy, the question is that, nurse, we're gonna have sex again, sexual intercourse, okay. So what will be your answer? Never. Oh, never. That's the thing. It's a question. <laughs> Another question commonly because it could be spurting, and I believe, of course, that I have to. I have received a question, of course, in my answers for that, okay. Another question would be, of course, is that if I'm a woman status post MI. What will be the best position for me, of course, to have sexual intercourse when I'm already? And another one, if you are a man, status post am I, what will be the recommended sexual position you have to engage in order, of course, for you, of course, to lessen the, the strain, of course, for the heart? So those are the questions. So that, it is possible because, again, we are training patients, of course, in a holistic manner. Okay? It might be, but weird. But if I will be in the board, I will throw you a lot of questions regarding those. Okay, but sad to say, I'm not yet the board of nursing. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then if you will take, of course, my answer, you say, oh, this is Mr. Lee. <laughs> so, but again, it is very important. Though, what I mean is that it's not only for a joke, but it is a perspective you have to think about. Because there's a question that could be, could be asked to you, of course, by your patients. If you don't know the principle, well, how will you respond to it? Is no. that? No. Okay, now, you're, you're, you have to give me the, the answer. When am I ready to have sex after post MI? Okay? What are, my, what are the criteria? So weight reduction will be very important. We do eliminate, of course, cholesterol and salt. So cholesterol are the two things. But sad to say, chips, oh, tacos, yes, are rich in cholesterol because it has fat, as well as it is salt. So that, and you will drink a lot, of course, of, okay, is that, oh, can I two Big Mac, okay? And, of course, a large Coke, Diet, please. Was the irony, of course, of a diet coke because you have two big men in your extra large, of course, coke? Excuse me, what's, what are you trying to do? So, this is the irony of it, isn't it? Okay, so sometimes, well, that, it happens, as you can see in the order. They're trying to diet. Coke diet, extra large. Okay? The two big men, of course, has a three French, large French fries on the sides. And again, six apple pies as dessert. Okay, so. Maintain healthy patterns of rest, sleep, because of why? Rest is very important. Because again, if we are awake, that's why people who are, who are working the nights has, of course, a higher wear, wear and tear value. Because of the fact, of course, that you have the tendency to push your blood pressure to be high. At the same time, of course, your heart rate, of course, is increasing. Yeah? Plus, people, of course, in the nights have the tendency, of course, to drink a lot of co coffee, which will increase, of course, the heart rate. Plus, of course, cause vasoconstriction, thus decreasing, of course, the deliver of oxygen plus increasing the blood pressure. Okay? So rest. And again, if you will be turning, of course, to be an LPS, at first three months, you will be having a lot of stress. Therefore, get the grasp, of course, of your own being, get the, the, the grasp, of course, of your of your work, and then later on for the following year, make sure again as a nurse, make it a mandate for yourself. You are working, you might be earning, of course, six figures in a year, but don't forget, of course, your vacation. You deserve it, okay? <laughs> Always relax, part if you can find it for some time, okay? So, but if your goal would be, of course, to be a millionaire, of course, as a nurse, at the age, of course, of certain age, usually forget about it. Your chances, of course, of getting to be a millionaire is better, of course, if you're gonna, of course, buy some lottery tickets, okay? Smoking cessation is very vital because, again, nicotine is a potent vasoconstrictor, okay? So because of that one, of course, is that we encourage not only nurses, but also our patients to stop smoking. If you are smoking and you want, of course, a patient to stop smoking, tell them, follow what I say, don't follow what I do, okay? Because again, you cannot, of course, lead by example. Because sometimes, it is, of course, we respect that one. It is a conscious decision of somebody if you want, of course, to stop smoking or not. 
Nobody could doubt us but themselves. We have to create, you have to reach a certain realization to stop. Okay, you could encourage them, but it's the person, give them the freedom of course to choose for themselves. What is the best for them? Okay? Right now, we cannot argue with that one. Even our doctors cannot mandate us legally. We have to stop smoking. No. We can still smoke, because, but again, their only goal is that to inform us with the risks. But again, anybody? No. We, nobody could tell us to stop what we want ourselves to do. Okay? But still, for the benefit of health, we try to encourage you. And we are trying to give examples, of course, what are the costs. And if you look at one, smoking cessation has been, of course, a different part. As you can see, for the one is that smoking, right now, of course, some advertisement, of course, to stop smoking would be somebody who doesn't have, of course, any throat anymore, who doesn't have any lungs. Or somebody, of course, who cannot speak anymore. Or speaking through a physical speech. Or your, of course, electronic speech. Because, again, their entire, of course, upper structure, of course, will be removed, of course, because, of course, of cancer. Okay? But, again, that's, that's part of it. That's advocacy, of course, that we have to even take a look for the one. Right now, of course, the risk, of course, of a lot, of course, of cancer right now is in the lungs. Because, of course, of cigarette smoking. One is or tobacco use, okay? And then because of the one, it's both number one, of course, for both male and female. Because, of course, a number of female, of course, in the rise, of course, that's smoking. And again, take a look for the one, younger generations. Now, we're not smoking anymore, but we're using vape. This is already the evolution of the way we smoke. So vaping, okay? And right now, we are with all, only vape tobacco. We also vape, of course, your marijuana already. The component, of course, of your hallucinogens, of course, could be in oil. Has fish oil, of course, it put it in the vape, and we can vape it, okay? We have the use, of course, of a light in order to burn, of course, certain parts, of course, of marijuana plant, okay? So vaping is another, is of evolution. Is it good? Prob probably, because, of course, we don't have any, we don't have, of course, the smoke portion for the one, but still, the risk, of course, of utilization of those products, hallucinogens, it might be, of course, tar. Tar would be you can avoid it one, but again, the nicotine in it, of course, will be more or less, of course, it's a vast of a stricter. Yeah? Ways to handle emotional upsets, because again, emotional upsets will gonna cause, of course, release of your or emotional upset stress releases your catecholamines. Okay? What are your catecholamines? These are of course your neurotransmitters that are released during stress. One of them would be, of course, your epinephrine. Epinephrine causes vasoconstriction. Thus, increasing your blood pressure. Okay, we're going to talk as we go along. What are the effects, of course, of neurotransmitter, epinephrine? Another one will be your acetylcholine, which neuro. But again, epinephrine, remember, we use epinephrine to reverse, of course, vasodilation because of the fact, of course, it is very potent vasoconstrictor. Okay? Client on antihypertensive medication. Explain the sensitive taking on the hypertensive medication. Again, don't miss this one because we have to maintain it. So, meaning to say, if you're under hypertensive medication, we have also, of course, to be trained how to monitor your blood pressure. Suggest so consultation with your, with your dietitian or support groups because, again, why? Longevity, another one, compliance with the management. Not only, of course, that we have medical management, we have also diet management as a composition, of course, of the cardiac disorder management. We might have medical in terms of pharmacologic or probably exercise. Okay, that, that one thing. Another one would be diet. Of course, another one, of course, would be the worst one, we don't want it to be to have any good surgery, okay? Consulting about fat diet. As a matter of fact, you have, of course, Dr. Hashimoto, is that Hajimoto, of course, in the Chicago, the fat, or Chicago fat doctor, okay? So I don't know about that one, or, or, or two is that one, but again, it's always recommended to lose weight and to keep the weight, of course, of the recommended one, okay? So again, that's why we have Weight Watchers, of course, that has so far the recommended, of course, systematic way and scientific way, of course, of losing weight. Primarily because, because they are capitalizing primarily on the psychological problems. <coughs> in, in Weight Watchers, you have to weigh in first what is your initial weight and why are you motivated to lose weight? Because you will be weighed again in a certain amount of time. What do you think if you start, of course, with this weight? Do you think, of course, it's good, of course, to lose weight? What if, of course, if you gain weight? Therefore, it's a negative thing. That's why your primary motivation, because you are looking forward that at that specific date, you have to show that you lose weight. That's the primary psychological motivation of Weight Watchers. Well, that's why, of course, the program is so primarily effective. Plus, of course, diet plays a vital role. Okay? Aerobic exercises, walking at a good pace is very important. So either outside, if, if, if you can do it outside, then you can of course walk in the trend. But again, walking is the best exercise because one, and the reason for that, why is that? It does not put any strain on your knee joints. Especially if you are overweight or you're heavy, 
straining on the knee, of course, will cause damage, of course, to the kneecaps, okay? That could cause strain later on as you move. That's why walking, okay, walking is the best one, of course, than running. Because running has the impact when you land on one foot, of course, when you run. But if you're walking, the level, of course, either it could be inclined, walking is good, but again, walking does not put, of course, much stress, of course, on both the knee and hip joints, okay? Why did you warm up before and cooling down? So when you warm up, so you want warm up, don't forget, of course, to cool down after, of course, massive exercise. Again, that will be, of course, very important as a part, of course, health teachings <coughs> of people, of course, both either preventive health or probably rehabilitating somebody who is status post, of course, a problem, either status post surgery or anybody, of course, who has a cardiac-related <coughs> problem, including CAD, as well as any form, of course, of peripheral vascular disorders. Okay? So how to prevent? We have said for the <coughs> Okay, so what are those? What are those? Give me, of course, how do you prevent um, cardiovascular disorders? Diet. Weight. Weight. One is? Weight reduction. Huh? Weight reduction. Diet. Yeah, so Exercise. weight reduction, of course, it is not, usually weight reduction is not by starving yourself. Because the more you starve yourself, the fatter you get. What's the fatter you got? <laughs> That's not family. It's more toxic, because why? If you don't have any glucose in your body, your body will tend to to use the next in line to produce glucose. And that is fats. But the only thing is that, could the body, of course, transform fats into glucose? More fats. Okay, again, again, this is a question. Could our body transform fats to glucose? No. The answer will be yes. First use of glucose will be, of course, the, the carbohydrates that you eat. But if you starve too much and you don't have any glucose reserve, one of them will be glycogen in your liver. Okay, we call this one animal starch. The liver will be going to break it down. But the ones, especially, just take a look for this one, especially the cycle of diabetic individuals, especially type 1. So next thing is that if you use the of course, or your glucose, your body is mandated to use the next available component. Okay, it will be fat. Okay, fatty acids. The bad thing about if the body will transform, we call it what is your? Glyc we call it what is your? Gluconeogenesis. Production, of course, of glucose out, of course, of different raw material. If the body will be using, of course, fat, your stored fats, your fatty acids, to produce glucose, there is a very toxic byproduct. We call it ketones. Okay? The more your body produce, uses your fats to, to, of course, to, to prefer glucose, it produces ketones. Ketones is very toxic, especially for your brain. That is why diabetic individuals, especially type 1 DM, who are in the, their blood sugar is not managed, their body has the tendency, of course, to utilize fat. Take a look for this one. Even they have high blood sugar, again, there is no insulin to go for, to assist, of course, the glucose inside the cell. Their body is still pumping, of course, the, the fats to produce, of course, glucose. The end product will be byproduct ketones are building up. That is why these people, of course, with diabetic ketoacidosis, decrease in ketones, acidotic environment, stop destroying their brain. Therefore, they are what they call, they are you going into, if not managed properly, they will go into your diabetic ketoacidotic coma. Okay? So, now the question will be, could the body, of course, utilize protein to produce glucose? The enzyme. The answer is yes. Okay? Why? The structural formula, of course, of your fat will be CHO. Carbohydrates are CHO. Structurally, of course, they could transform it. Your protein could be utilized, of course, as glucose. CHON is protein, and your glucose will be CHO. You have a lot of byproduct of nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to build up. It's going to be increasing your ammonia. Okay? It will be turned to be. It will be increasing your ammonia in the blood. If you are using more protein, it will be resulting into wasting of the muscles. Another one, another toxic waste that will kill your brain. That's why if your liver, of course, of the patient is not functioning properly, meaning to say, of course, they cannot detoxify the ammonia level, of course, of the ammonia level to be transformed into ammonium so that it could be released to the urine, especially for those people who have problems with liver, they end up into, of course, coma. We call it one hepatic and so polypathy, which will the cause of the destruction of the brain. See? We don't want protein and glucose to be, uh, protein and fats to be utilized as a source of glucose because they have a very toxic byproduct. Ketones for fats, ammonia, of course, for protein. We, that's why 
Starving in the process of dieting is not a good thing because it will going to kill your constipation. That is a very true of course, thing, of course, especially in your diabetes, the diabetes, no, that that's of course type one. Okay, what else? Stop smoking. Stop smoking if you are smoking. If you are if you are not smoking, don't start. Okay. If you are of course an outbid instructor and you stop smoking, so in the, if you have of course a student who graduated or passed their entrance and come to you to smoke, of course, smoke only one stick. Okay, limit. Okay, so we're probably not smoke at all. But again, <laughs> we can do that. What else? That's one thing, of course, to prevent, of course, clot formation. Straightening of course, your legs, of course, will be a purpose for that one, will be, of course, is that to promote venous return, okay? Crossing it or putting it, or bending it, of course, for more than two hours will be causing, of course, venous stasis. Venous stasis meaning to say there is a decreased return of blood to the heart. heart. Venous stasis, of course, or blood pooling is a primary environment where clot could form, okay? So crossing your legs, sitting for too long is not recommended. Therefore, you have, of course, to, 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 to stand up in order, of course, to promote circulation. At the end of the day, sometimes, if you are standing for so long because of gravity, there will be increase in venous stasis. That's why sometimes you have, of course, to elevate your legs above the level of your heart sometimes in order to promote venous return. Okay? What else? Sodium reduction. Sodium reduction, meaning to say, what are the sodium? Where could you get the sodium or sodium in, from the diet? Okay, chips. French fries. What else? Huh? Canned food. Canned food. Okay. Probably. Processed food. Or anything old processed food could, could, could contain, of course, sodium. If it does not sodium glutamate, it could be sodium citrate as a form of a preservative. Okay. So again, minimize the sodium because again, why? If we have, we eat a lot of sodium, wherever sodium goes, water, water follows. follows. Therefore, we are increasing, of course, another component, blood volume, if we eat a lot of sodium. Okay? As you can notice, if you eat chips, of course, you, you want to, of course, to go, of course, Diet Coke, okay? Or probably eating water. Because of the fact, of course, that it is the Monday because your, your hematocrit will be increasing or your salt level, of course, your blood will be increasing, thus causing, of course, for you to be thirsty, to be mandated, of course, to drink a lot of water. Okay? What else? Salt, stress, avoid stress, meaning to say, live a stress-free life. Therefore, don't be a nurse. Yeah. As simple as that, because nursing life is so stressful, just to let you know, at the beginning, okay? But when you get the hang of it, okay, either you will be an effective nurse, that's why I told, I told of course, my, my previous students, of course, when they graduated in bed, to, be care, to become a nurse is a challenge, but it is easy, easy. The, more, the, 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 the greater challenge will be, okay, then to, to answer the question, what kind of nurse were you at the end of the day? Okay. And the challenge will be very, very still, of course, struggling, of course, to become a better nurse from the way you be. Okay? Do not compete with others to become nurses. You have a frame of reference, but always, of course, better yourselves. Okay? In the end, of course, it will going to give you a lot of reward. Okay? Respect, of course, that's why you don't, of course, ask for respect. You gain it. Okay? The same is true, especially with my work. I'm not talking, of course, listen to me, listen to me. I have to present to you that I know my stuff before you can believe in me. Okay? And again, even though sometimes I still give you, of course, the benefit, of course, that you have to validate what I'm saying here. It might be wrong. If I'm be wrong, I could be stunned, corrected. Okay? Because again, not everything, of course, everything I know, although I have more experience than you as a nurse. And as a matter of fact, I'm the only nurse here in this room so far. Okay? <laughs> but it is not, of course, the end of this effort because next year, it might be the entire room is full, of course, of nurses. Okay? Do you get what I mean? So that's one thing, of course, for the so for those education, just make sure, of course, it will be focusing more on the changing habits. Lifestyle modification is a big intervention in health teachings in preventing and, of course, preventing in, in the, your cardiovascular disorders or maintaining cardiovascular health. Another one, diet is very important because of more cholesterol and so. Okay. Another one, of course, will be, of course, activities that makes, of course, us heart healthy. Okay. So don't sit there. Stand sometimes, and you have, of course, to walk. Okay, stand up and walk, okay? So here we have to evaluate, of course, things, of course, that are, do we reach, of course, result, of course, the problem. So evaluation will be, of course, the end part of course, the nursing process. Again, it will be the beginning, because again, in the evaluation part, of course, we have to check what are the problems that were not resolved. And then we start again, a form of assessment, and build up from there to diagnose patients, of course, and, of course, present another form of intervention to the nursing problem that we identified, okay? So 
Tumpid ko ang specific disorders, these are the abnormalities in the cardiovascular disorders that of course that will be more or less disturbed. Of course, the function of course of the circulatory system or the cardiovascular health. Okay? One will be your atonal sclerosis, isn't it? Hardening of the artery. What is primarily, of course, for this pathological condition? Okay? The arteries thicken, hardens, and lose elasticity. Okay? What starts it? The form, of course, are two things supposed to build up. One will be the low density lipoprotein. Low density lipoprotein, meaning to say they settle at the bottom, they are so low, therefore they have the tendency, of course, it's very hard to push a low density lipoprotein out of the blood vessel. Okay? Because of that one, Together, of course, with the thrombus, blood, even RBC could be trapped, of course, in that, in that, of course, at the Roma there, or something like that one there. And then later on, it becomes building up, building up, building up. The end product will be hardening of the wall, and the worst effect of that will be narrowing of the opening of the blood vessel. And we know that a narrowed blood vessel, it requires more force for the heart to eject enough blood in order, of course, to be delivered across, of course, that obstruction, okay? Obstruction of the flow will lead, of course, into two things, okay? One, elevating the blood pressure, which is very, very profound, of course, which could lead, of course, to potential of a lot of things, of CDA and MI. Another one, of course, will be decreased perfusion, okay? Decreased perfusion of the tissues after, of course, your obstruction, okay? The atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, most common type of atherosclerosis, wherein, of course, the fatty deposits would be, of course, the scaffold of the smooth vessel wall inside, and then gradual absorption of circulating lipids by arterial walls, circulating lipids, typically, of course, your low density lipoprotein. Okay? Lumen of the artery narrows, flows completely because plaque formation starts to build. <coughs> it will add up, of course, RBCs could be trapped there, or all your blood cells could be trapped there. Causing increase, of course, in the buildup, okay, of, of course, of your atherosclerosis. It could affect, of course, the heart valves, okay, later on, if there's, of course, some pressure. Lead, of course, to hypertension or CAD. If it is a coronary artery, it could be, of course, cause blocking, decreased perfusion to the part, certain part, of course, of the heart, causing, of course, your ischemia or transient ischemic attacks, or it could be, of course, a full closure or a full blockage, which could lead, of course, into your myocardial infarction. Okay. Treatment measures to attempt control of the blood cholesterol level with the time. So that's why we have to measure, of course, your total cholesterol level, which will get a target will be as much as possible to push it below 150. Okay? So the number to reach, of course, will be some doctors will get and give you push it below 200. Okay? But again, at 150, it is better. But at least, of course, somehow, okay, your risk is still starting, of course, to grow. Okay? So again, with your high cholesterol, with your high density lipoprotein, and your low density lipoprotein. The balance between high density lipoprotein and of course low density lipoprotein will be very, very important. Okay, so our goal will be increase HDL, lower LDL. So that's why your value here of LDL it should be pushed, of course, below 100 or below 90. And the HDL, we push it above 40 to be specific or above 60 to be to have to be having, of course, a better value. Okay. Some lab, of course, will be especially in male, it should be above this one will be above, of course, 39 or 40. This will be below, of course, 100, okay? So if it is 100 plus or below 90, of course, plus 40, therefore, that's 130. So the remainder will be, of course, your triglycerides. So that, again, the value of the triglycerides in order, of course, for your volume to be as lower as 150 total cholesterol, okay? Okay. So one pro that's blood or atherosclerosis. So there's no way. If we have, of course, heart plus, but the right, of course, to blood clot, what can we do? Either we can use thrombolytics later on after six hours, or it could be, of course, angiotasty if we have a blockage, or it could be later on if we cannot correct, of course, the blockage, then we have, of course, to do surgical intervention, just like, of course, your bypass, coronary artery bypass. Okay, hypertension, how do you define hypertension? High blood pressure. Sad to say, it is very affect one in five people in America. Okay, to be specific, Hypertension, of course, affects primarily what segment of population? African Americans, I have to say. Okay? That's why if you're an African American, be watchful, of course, for your blood pressure. Okay? Under age of 65, more common in men. Okay? Always take a look. More common in men over age 65, more common in women. Okay? So 
So again, under 65 more common in men, and over 60, over age 65 more common in women. Okay. The question will be, who has the highest frequency of heart attack? Men or women? Men. In between this one. Men. So again, usually affects of course hypertension, but again we are talking about myocardial infarction. Okay. So again, if you take a look for this one, is that if you can observe, okay, MI occurs more in men, okay, but survival rate, of course, is very poor in women. So if you will compare, of course, somebody who has a migraine in France and men and in women, okay, <coughs> there might be a lot of occurrence in male, but again, usually, of course, they have, their chance of survival is higher as compared to female. Female who has suffered, who have suffered, of course, a migraine infarction has a lower because, of course, of the very nature, of course, of their blood vessels. Their blood vessels, especially coronary arteries, are 10% smaller than that of the male counterpart. That's why maintaining the opening, of course, of your coronary arteries, women, is harder. Therefore, your completion, your mortality, the mortality related to MI is very high, of course, in women because of the major anatomical structure. The diameter, of course, of the coronary arteries, of course, or coronary blood vessels is smaller in women. Okay? And sad to say, believe it or not, the symptoms, of course, of coron of myocardial infarction later on is very subtle among women. That's why, that's why I, I, I actually have heard, I mentioned even it is, could be, of course, a form of indigestion. Without knowing it, it's a full-blown myocardial infarction in women. That's why there are some educating, of course, groups right now that, again, you cannot undermine, of course, the MI in women because they could present a very different manifestation. But it is a full blown MI. Okay? So that's one thing. So consequences that are, that is MI. But again, consequences by cardiac infarction, again, if you have chronic hypertension, first one, two things MI, CVA. Another one, hypertension is number two that we're going to cause for the kidney to shut down. Okay, that's why if they are hypertensive, we want to manage, of course, the blood pressure, or else they're going to have kidney damage, also known as your end stage renal failure. So most of my clients, of course, if they're doing dialysis, of course, are usually either, most of them are having either DM, diabetes nonatus, plus hypertension. And right now, the number one cause, of course, of end stage renal failure in the United States of America is diabetes. Number two, before, which is number one, is hypertension. Sad to say, DM and hypertension are brothers and sisters from different mothers. Therefore, if, some, if hypertension is present, there's a likelihood that DM will get a come. Most often, if DM comes first, hypertension will get a come, whether you like it or not. Okay? So the risk, of course, is higher in damaging, of course, the kidney. Condition of the heart and blood vessels, greatest effect, of course, of blood pressure. Because why? Because, of course, of your afterload. Okay? So the heart will be the strain and strain. Remember, the mandate of the heart will be to pump in regardless of the pressure to deliver effective oxygen throughout the body. Okay? Treatment bring the blood pressure within normal range. Okay? So the cause of this hypertension will be spasm of, of small arterioles. So again, what affects, of course, increase in blood pressure? What are the factors, of course, in hypertension? Smoking. Mm. So smoking causes, of course, your mm -hmm. afternoon problem. Vasoconstriction. What else? <clears throat> How does sodium intake affect, of course, blood pressure? Increase the third factor, blood volume. The higher the blood volume, the higher the pressure. Okay? Because it's one thing. So again, if we are talking, of course, a cardiac problem, especially hypertension, these are the three major problems that affects, of course, the heart. If you are having a heart, but your heart, of course, is ineffective, just like we have, of course, a pump failure, known as your congestive heart failure. Do you think we have an effective, of course, delivery in terms of oxygenation? The problem will be no. Okay? So again, blood pressure could be affected by the pressure ejection, of course, of the heart itself, by the resistance of the blood vessels, whether they are constricted, the diameter, of course, could be small or big. Okay? And another one is that with the volume, of course, of the blood passing through it, the one that will be influential for that one is water content of our circulating blood, which usually the number one, of course, factor for that one is that the more salt you got in your, of course, bloodstream, the higher the blood volume you get, okay? So that's why sometimes one way, of course, to manage, of course, your blood pressure 
First one is that we regulate the force, we strengthen the heart so that the heart could do the force effectively. The force we regulating. Another one, after load, we are giving you for some medication to block probably for sure angiotensin 2, your ACE inhibitor. Angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, you see that one? You, especially your prel, 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 prel. This is the prel, doctor, prel, 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 prel. Okay, those are your ACE inhibitors. Right? So beta arginine blood pressure is like your all, 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 all. To final load, because all load is the total load. Okay? So that's one thing, of course, why the function for this one is that usually we prevent basal constriction. Okay? Why? If you don't block angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs, it will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. What's the effect? Massive basal constriction. But if you were going to block it by giving ACE inhibitors, it inhibits the ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme, the result will be angiotensin 1 will just float in the blood but was not converted into angiotensin 2. Result? Decreased blood pressure. Because there is, of course, a regular basal movement tone. Okay? Another one is that we give, of course, Lasix, we give hydrochlorothiazide. What's the purpose for that one? We want, of course, to push, okay? To push, of course, the kidney to waste water. Because wasting <coughs> water will be decreasing blood volume, thus decreasing, of course, your blood pressure. You see? So the management still, of course, even hypertension itself, will be based, of course, on this condition. Okay? Effective cardiac output. Okay. So treatment to bring that, and again, the one way to do that one. It could be, of course, in the middle of the lung attack, okay? or the basal motor centers, of course, in the brain. But physically, of course, we are doing, of course, a lot of crucial things. Because again, the blood vessel wall, of course, is a muscular organ. Therefore, they have the capacity to contract, to close, or, of course, to dilate. Yeah? So other sclerosis, continue treatment measures, attempt to control clients' blood pressure level with a diet medication exercise. I think I, I, I went back. Okay. This is, of course, blood distribution. So usually, of course, it's recommended, of course, your blood pressure will be. Average blood pressure will be? 110 over 80. 120 over? 70. 80, okay. So when you say if you are 130, you are hypertensive? No. 3. No. Are we there? No, sir. Well, some doctor says that's normal. Because you're having anxiety to see the doctor. That's why it goes like a little bit. It depends on the person's basic thing. <laughs> that is why it's very important for us, of course, to get a baseline. baseline. Okay? Hypertension is defined an elevation, of course, of 20 mmHg from the baseline, systole, and 10 mmHg from the baseline, the ostium. Okay? And to at least two certain, in two certain, of course, incidents. So if the patient was 120, 120 over 80, 80 you know, which is at what, what 80 if the patient of course develop of course 134, 134 over over of course uh, over 88. Is that of course hypertension? The answer is no. Okay? So and provided there will be of course manifestation that occurs, but technically that is of course your and the same is true of course as your hypotension. The hypotension, when when you suffer hypotension, when there is a marked decrease from a base on 20 mmHg, okay. Systole and then MMHG, of course, diastole. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's very hard because sometimes because you have, you have to check of course the baseline of that patient. But again, if the baseline of the patient is 200 over 120, that's already <laughs> hypertension, whether you like it or not. Okay? Remember, we have, of course, to be closer, of course, the map, of course, to be maintained 60 to 100. Okay? A map of over 100 might be, of course, a form of hypertension. It is not useful anymore in the delivery. It will be, of course, causing, of course, rupture of the blood vessels. Okay? Hypertensive heart disorder, high blood pressure, of course, I'm going back and going back. <laughs> Increased pressure within the blood vessels damage to small arterioles because small arterioles cannot be subjected to high pressure. Vicious cycles, passing increased blood pressure contributing to atherosclerosis because there's a blockage. Heart pumps harder to force blood to the arteries, and the left ventricle usually, of course, will be increasing in size and strength. We call this one ashore, left ventricular hypertrophy, as a manifestation that the heart is trying to push harder from a constricted blood vessels, especially arteries, especially in the presence, of course, of your atherosclerosis. Okay? It will be the cause kidney failure, malformation of the blood vessels, while one of the malformations of the blood vessels will be known as your Ballooning, of course, of your arteries. Known as your aneurysm. Because the aneurysm has no integrity, of course, as compared, of course,
to the elasticity and the thickness, of course, of a regular, of course, artery, their tendency is to rupture. One of the worst form of aneurysm will be is, is, is of course your abdominal aortic aneurysm, which usually is not diagnosed right there and then. Okay? Commonly because we can only of course palpate it if you get the patient's lying down and we could palpate, of course, a pulsating thing on the client's abdomen. And again, anybody who is having abdominal aortic aneurysm that is ruptured will eventually die. There's no way of saving it unless otherwise. The patient is in the OR table, and the patient has abdominal aortic aneurysm rupture. Then the, the patient will gonna have, of course, the risk, not the possibility of bleeding. But outside, of course, the parameters of OR table, the patient is not out there, and the patient went into ruptured uh, abdominal aortic uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm equals, of course, six feet under from mortality. What about yes. Brain aneurysm is that also the person died. It depends, of course, on how big the aneurysm and the, the, the location of the aneurysm. Okay. So again, there are two practices, basically, we're going to talk about the CBA. So the most common one, of course, on the hemorrhagic, of course, CBA is usually a ruptured aneurysm. Now, the next question with ruptured aneurysm will be, which part, of course, of the brain is being supplied by, the, of course, the ruptured aneurysm, okay? So if, if of course, the supply, of course, of that part of the brain will be high, lower, and that the, the portion of the brain, of course, is not receiving enough oxygen, then, of course, it will be, of course, causing a massive damage, depending in which center part of the brain. There's a question. Because the brain, of course, has a, a spark. Is it intracranial? Is it, of course, a dual hemorrhage? It depends, of course, on where, which layer, of course, of the artery. Then the question will be, of course, that how big? Do, is it, of course, above or below the circle of bullets? It's a question which says, is circle of bullets, which provides, of course, a lot, of course, of ways, of pathways to produce, to, to support, of course, the circulation of the brain. Or another one for that one is that, how hard is the bleed? Because again, if it was bleeding, the next thing that will happen, especially if it's an adult, will be increased intracranial pressure. So increased intracranial pressure, if you have a bleeding there that has not been stopped, okay, the tendency, of course, for the brain, if there's no opening, will be, of course, to what you call as your brain herniation. So that's why some, some people, of course, still cut and do craniotomy, of course, in the stroke, in order to allow some room for swelling, or else the brain will be pushed, of course, at the base in the foramen magnum. Even in the foramen magnum, if the brain will be pushed up there, then there will be a lot, of course, of brain damage, okay? So that's why sometimes we have to do craniotomy to evacuate the blood. The question would be, is the bleeding possibly, of course, that we could evacuate? Is it operable kind, of course, of bleeding? If not, then, of course, we have to do only one thing. We have to wait until the patient dies or the bleeding to stop. Okay? Or we can do, of course, something, of course, to do another one. We have to do it from inside. One way to do from inside, of course, is to do this like your angiography, brain angiography. Okay? We have to insert instrumentation. Could we, of course, stop it from the inside? If there is, of course, a leakage only, could we strengthen, of course, the aneurysm to prevent it from collapsing or rupture? So there's a lot, of course, of questions that could be pertaining, of course, to do the, those things. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so it depends, of course, on that one, and we're going to talk about the specific for that one, okay? But again, it could be, but the risk, of course, of abdominal aortic aneurysm is way bleeding because of greater take a look. Abdominal aorta is the closest, is a big, big artery. Each time the heart pumps, bleeding will go into the abdominal cavities. The risk, of course, of bleeding in if it can be repaired. But look it up, if you open the abdomen, and then right away, abdominal aortic aneurysm, you can see, of course, that the tummy spontaneously, of course. And again, it will be board-like. If the doctor will be operate on that, shh, it will be spurting all over the place, fresh blood. Before you know it, of course, the, the blood volume inside, of course, the muscle compartment mm -hmm. is already drained because it's very close, of course, from the aorta, from the heart. Okay? So this is why, of course, the risk, of course, of the abdominal, abdominal, abdominal aortic rupture, of course, secondary, of course, for the problems, of course, in the bone formation of blood vessels is very high. I don't know. Anybody, of course, who got a ruptured abdominal aneurysm, I know, or cases, <laughs> died. Never survived. Nobody survived. Yeah? Symptoms absent for three years, except elevated blood pressure. So it's actually hypertension will be a known cause. Sometimes it could be, of course, changes, of course, in the endocrine disorders. So there's a lot. Okay? Okay. So encourage clients to exercise. Okay? So <laughs> we don't exercise. Observe moderation in eating. Okay? Avoid tension and anxiety. Wow. I don't know how to do this one. 
This one is doable. <laughs> this one is doable. Avoid tension and anxiety, especially with the stressful life here in United States of America. I don't know. Okay? That's why when you retire, get your money, of course, and you want to retire and buy an island. <laughs> Symptoms of become severe headache, because again, there's a headache. Hypotension could cause headache. Hypertension could cause headache as well. Clear. So there's a always headache. Headache secondary, of course, to hypoperfusion. Headache secondary to increased blood pressure. Okay? And usually, if it's headache, you see, of course, it's hypertensive in nature, especially. Commonly, it is occipital in nature. Okay? That's why behind it was the head occipital in nature. Okay. Malignant hypertension is added on the concern elevated blood pressure that's controllable. Meaning to say, progressive rapid may cause difficult, cause rapid necrosis of the vital organs, especially, of course, the three major organs the heart, the brain, of course, and the kidney. Okay? So, that's one important thing. And then hypotension is the lowering of course of blood pressure, baseline again usually decrease at least of course of 20 mma cheaper systole. Okay? Clinical manifestation depends of course on the cause. Again, causes are one of your three mechanisms. Take a look. Why there is of course low blood pressure? Preload, afterload, blood volume still. Okay? First one, heart rate problems. If you of course your heart rate is beating lower, of course, or the heart muscle pump problem, this is a preload problem, okay? After load, vasodilation, it will lead, of course, into, of course, your hypotension. If you are dehydrated, if you are having hemorrhage, you have volume problem. Therefore, you have hypertension, hypotension, okay? So as you can see, of course, this one is that, that is still, of course, the pulsation in the banishment. So again, if our problem, of course, will be heart muscle, sometimes we have to strengthen, of course, the heart rate. If our problem is the diameter of the blood vessel, either we constrict it in order to increase blood pressure, okay? So just like if it's an allergic response, we have, of course, to vas cause vasoconstriction by giving epinephrine and light traps, okay? If a volume problem, start IV fluids and be delivered, of course, your plasma expander. It will be either, of course, your RBC or packed RBC, or it could be, of course, just plain NSS. Okay? Treatment depends on underlying condition, rate problems, heart rate too fast or too slow, because of the fact, of course, that it could affect, of course, will be. But hypotension, usually our problem will be weak but fast heartbeat. And that's why we call this one as your weak, thready pulse as a manifestation of severe hypotension. Causes of problems, why? Why do we have problems with the heart? Because we have, of course, tissue death on the margin of the muscle, secondary to MI. Cardiomyopathy, I mean, it might be in cardiomyopathy, of course, would be dilated, of course, heart chambers. Acute cardiac or aortic insufficiency, it might be some blockage there in the aorta, okay? Prostatic valve dysfunction, wherein, of course, there's no flow, proper closure, okay? Medicaid, okay, cardiac tamponade, what's the cardiac tamponade? <coughs> The heart has three layers. The innermost layer, of course, of the heart is endocardium. The, the second layer, the muscle layer, will be, of course, your myocardium. And outside will be, of course, your pericardium, of course, has an extension. There are two layers, the serous pericardium and the visceral pericardium, okay? In between that one, of course, will be your, your pericardial cavity, okay? And usually, sometimes, during injury, gunshot wounds, or stab wounds, probably, blood with pool because again the pericardium actually the pericardial sac has a function it prevents of course one over stretching of the heart believe it or not if the heart will be allowed of course to beat the bands up and expand it it will be of course up to the point that it will be the be will burst itself that's why your pericardium will be the prevented from over stretching but in the event of course sometimes injury of course towards at one just like increased in fluid volume in the pericardial sac or blood pulling in the pericardium, it will increase, of course, the pressure inside the pericardial sac. So what, what happens? The heart will be con con constricted and compressed, and the heart cannot beat anymore, or cannot expand, okay? Preventing the heart, of course, to beat, or to expand, or to contract, because, of course, of pressure. Secondary, of course, the accumulation of fluid or blood in the pericardial sac is what they call as your cardiac component, okay? Meaning to say, Constriction, of course, of the entire heart, secondary, of course, to pressure around it in the pericardial sac. The most common cause for that one is that fluid accumulation or blood accumulation in the pericardial sac. Cardiac component, okay? 
So pulmonary embolism, medication, of course, that affects the heart function. Cause of volume problems, we have hemorrhage, gastrointestinal fluid loss, vomiting, and diarrhea, okay? Renal injury disease could be central nervous system injury, just like, of course, in the middle of, okay? Spinal injury, sepsis, medication affected vascular tone. Usually vascular tone would be, of course, very important. Thing. Sepsis, of course, or a medication that affects vascular tone, just like your vasodilators, okay? It could be given, of course, to patient. Conditions causing large volume fluid loss, just like, of course, anything. It could be, of course, um, you have diabetes insipidus. In diabetes insipidus, do you be? What is the, what's the problem in diabetes insipidus again? Ketoacidosis. No, Antidiuretic hormone, SIADH. Is, is, is it increased or decreased antidiuretic hormone? Increased or decreased? Again, in diabetes insipidus, is there any increase or decrease of antidiuretic hormone? Please divide the house. Who is in favor, of course, of increase? Increase in antidiuretic hormone. Who is in favor of decrease? Nobody. I'm going to raise my hand, okay? The answer will be decrease, okay? Antidiuretic hormone is, of course, a hormone that prevents somebody, of course, from healing. Okay? okay. If you have an increase, again, if you have an increase, of course, in, in your antidiuretic hormone, meaning to say the patient is accumulating a lot of water and is not thin, your problem is hypertension. That condition will be usually, of course, take a lot of that. That is very common and significant manifestation of a problem with increased antidiuretic hormone. We call it one ashore, syndrome of in a, inappropriate antidiuretic ADH. hormone or your no, SIAD. S-I-D-A, it's I-A-D-H, or SIAD, okay? My SIAD, but not of course, <laughs> it's the word SIAD. The problem in SIAD will be hypertension because again, you have a lot of antidiuretic hormone. Once antidiuretic hormone is released, the kidney is prevented to produce urine, okay? But if you have diabetes insipidus, Meaning to say, you have, a lot, you have, of course, a decreased antidiuretic hormone. What happened, of course, to your kidney? It wastes and wastes water. That is why diabetes insipidus is known, just like diabetes, because of the major manifestation similar to diabetes mellitus, polyuria. Okay? Because there is no antidiuretic hormone that prevents your kidney from wasting too much water. Okay? Therefore, diabetes insipidus, the probability, of course, to develop will be hypotension because, of course, of an endocrine problem. Because there is no antidiuretic hormone to prevent from producing it. Okay? So that's one thing. This condition, of course, must include lab loss, especially, of course, in your diabetes insipidus. Okay? Now, another problem, of course, will be heart. conditions, of course, that affect, of course, the heart, the heart of course, with that. Okay? I have a lot of important things to discuss, though. It's okay. Oh, it's not. This is just part of this because I have, of course, the peripheral blood pressure. I went, of course, further. So you have only, of course, few more left. Any questions? But again, I could repeat myself again, of course, on Wednesday. If you don't have any questions.